What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Terror Table for episode 76. My name is Mitch, one of your regular co-hosts. Alongside me, as always, Diego. And re- uh, for second returning guest, I guess third, because not including Courtney, but she doesn't count. Uh, we have a returning guest today. Everybody, welcome back, Jeff Thiessen. Oi, oi. So say, got- say the catchphrase. <laughs> What? My name is Jeff. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I was worried it would take more than nine seconds. For that. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, I'm just going to get some things out of the way first. If you're a first-time listener here, The Terror Table is a podcast dedicated to unfiltered and unrated discussions on the horror genre. Uh, today <coughs> we are discussing The Monster Squad, the film by Fred Decker and Shane Shane Black. But, Squad uh, up. Um, but... What should we said about that is like we're we're gonna have a general conversation about the Monster Squad, but it's also gonna be a big heavy discussion on family friendly <laughs> horror movies and movies that got us basically another gateway episode. Um, we're gonna share some stories from listeners and uh, it should be a good conversation. But before that, we're gonna do the normal thing where we just talk about what we've been up to and what we've been seeing. Um, but be- to, to, uh, I guess to kick all that off is just say, well, of course, welcome back, Jeff. Um, since you've been on here, you've started your own podcast. You've recorded three shows. That's the So Be It podcast. Um, you've probably watched at least twenty more horror movies. Uh, you've had your testicles cut out, and you. Well, that was this week. It was last week. Oh, it was actually yeah, it was a week from yesterday. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why did we hold a funeral? And on top of that, on top of that, uh, most importantly, you've killed Roseanne Barr's career. I did. Yeah, that was you. Because we we always talk about how we accidentally kill celebrities when we talk about them on the tear table. You were talking about Roseanne. I think that was you. Oh, I don't think it was me, actually. Was I? Fuck, I'm pretty sure it was you. Uh, I, I drank a lot. But <laughs> it might have been. Well, I'm going to give you credit for Thanks, that. Thanks. I'll take it. Sure. Rest in peace, Roseanne. Um, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm honored because I think I have the distinction of the longest episode, right? Yes. Yeah, you're so, our longest guest for sure. So this one, I'm going to make sure it's the shortest one. <laughs> so every response will be six words or less. Yeah. Just, just so you know. <laughs> Very perfect. <laughs> um, but yeah, so everyone knows that we were supposed to be doing our listener appreciation series, um, but we're holding off on that until we can have Boozy back here um, because we're not going to watch Dreamcatcher and let Boozy not see it we're not gonna let him get away with that he's, he's seen it before right? yes okay. but he he was trying to strategically miss this one but he, we're gonna make sure he's here for that um so that should be coming in two weeks because next week we have to plan something else out because our guest fell through um yeah we'll talk about that after Eric. okay <laughs> uh we'll we'll discuss that but before everything else i just want to talk about your podcast a little bit before we get going on what we've been seeing because so you've decided like what made you decide that you wanted to start a podcast because was this a thing that you wanted to do before you came on the tear table uh, yeah it was a thing i've always wanted to do but th- through a variety of reasons mostly due to me being a fucking moron who can't set up anything <laughs> beyond uh ps4 uh yeah. i just kind of let it go by the wayside and then i did the guest spot with you guys and i was kind of like yeah, that, that I think I can see a way where I can actually do this. So, that yeah, was it's a, been that was so much fun. That was a highlight episode for me and Boozy. Oh, it was a blast. Yeah. I got home and I'm like, I think I can do what they do. Maybe. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> Just try to keep up, kid. Exactly. Um, but yeah, so like, what? W- one thing I want to get out of the way that we haven't talked about before, though, is what? What are your opinions on? film criticism, music criticism in general, uh, and what made you decide that, because that's one th- question that I get asked often is, why you? Why do you have a horror podcast? What gives you the... No, what gives you I, the right? No, but yeah, like for lack of better words, what gives you the right to talk about this? Like where where are your, where is your credibility at? Uh, well, you know, if you have as much credibility <laughs> as anybody, I think that would uh, be in a position to be getting paid for it. Yeah. Like if uh, for... Anybody who don't doesn't know I I'm a music writer who does get paid for it and I have no credentials. Yeah, like there's, there's no schooling for that. So uh, I always and I guess I'll, we'll talk about Craig later, who's a critic and, and a whole different ballpark. Different but, Craig. <laughs> yeah, I always I, I actually wrote a big article once, basically being like try to ignore critics, like find one you like and uh, move toward albums that they recommend and figure out why they're recommending it. But don't think that for whatever reason that they are <clears throat> represent an opinion that means more. Because critics, to me, critics' opinions are a good frame of reference. But I don't. I honestly don't think they mean anything more than you guys in this room. Yeah, and that's the other thing too. Is uh, even a couple of years ago when I was getting dipping my hand in uh, filmmaking with a uh, former guest of the show, Dylan Hershuk, he was saying like he had been to film school. He went to Vancouver and he spent like two years of his life there, uh, getting into to the position where he can do what he does today. 
And I said, like, I don't know what I'd be able to do to help you. He's just like, man, you've seen more movies than anyone I've seen. And that actually counts for a lot more than what some people give credit for. So it's like more so like you believe in knowledge. And as long as you can form a strong opinion in one way or another. Yeah, it's just having the uh, dedication to watch or listen to a shit ton of things. Yeah. And maybe this sounds snobby, but you have to have a base level intelligence to apply. <laughs> I'm so, There's no. no other way to put it. You can't be a fucking moron. It's okay. I'm a condescending person, too. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, uh, otherwise, I don't know. It, it, there's no easy way to put that, but yeah. otherwise, just the guy in the bar just talking about Man on Fire or something. Yeah, right? exactly. Which is a great movie. That's a good movie. <laughs> yeah. I also, I have, uh, that actually leads into my next and last question before we get into the normal stick is that uh, we've become pretty good friends since you've come on the show. We talk pretty much every day yep. and um, helping you get your podcast started. You guys are doing it here. Uh, what I've come to realize is that you got a really big personality. And so do I. Thanks. Like, I have a very big personality. I think that that's an important thing to have when you're tackling a subject so passionately. Like, you have to have your a strong opinion. But, like, how... Are you prepared to have a subjective opinion on something? Because, <laughs> like, that, that, that's the thing is, like... Uh, it was really hard for me to come on the terror table and realize I'm like, just because I didn't like it doesn't mean I can just shit all over it because like there are plenty of other people who feel completely differently about I do uh, how I do. Um, so wh- how, how are you planning on tackling that with so be it? Like, do you, have you thought about that yet? Or are you just more so doing you? Honestly, man, I, th- I think with uh, whether it's movie or music criticism, I, I really think uh, objectivity, I think it's a bunch of shit. I don't think when people you, want. I don't think you people want you to be objective. They what? Like people, like you just talked about how yeah. subjectivity is mm-hmm. a problem or something to get around. Well, I think uh, the, the, it's just important to like for me. Like it, it was, I had to hold back on how much I hate Rob Zombie's Halloween. I, I don't think you do have to hold back because that's the thing. Like, that's the thing because it's like you know, like there's people out there who, who shit on music and stuff all the time. Like there's there's artists that are like wow, like widely hated that I love because mm-hmm. and, and it's like I'm not gonna uh, people can think what they want like I'm not gonna yeah. it's not gonna sway my opinion yeah. that's why like I, I think I'm one of the only guys on the terror table who I don't I don't it's not that I don't care as much as I'm the least critical out of us three I think because I'm, uh, I'm really? I am I wouldn't I wouldn't guess that <laughs> no. uh, well it, <laughs> I'm the least like I mean like like I, I don't care about criticizing things as much Mm. Yeah, it's it's a conscious decision for me to be the middleman of yeah, the terror yeah. table. Like it's I'm I'm very like I'm doing that because I don't want I want like uh, obviously when you have a podcast you want people to listen to you. Yeah. yeah, and that's the problem though too is like there's been so many times where I've listened to a podcast where I've completely disagreed with someone's opinion and I almost completely wrote them off because of that because like mm. that that's just the thing that happens when you're discussing arts or you're doing yeah. Yeah. something that is. Obje- objective in some ways I, I think to build on what I was saying with what you asked me is that people who listen even fairly frequently kind of have figured out what Mitch's criteria is yeah. for what makes a good movie right so they have formed they already have it in their head what how Mitch would view something as worthwhile or whatever so I wouldn't be particularly worried if I were you of being objectively trying to examine something because yeah. I think people already know you're coming from you're coming from a knowledgeable place so if you really shit on something they can apply it to that criteria like, well, yeah. it makes sense. So if you're... Makes sense dis- that I... Yeah. Yeah, if you want to destroy a movie, like it's a Rob Zombie movie, I think a lot of people can figure out you're coming from a place of knowledge and passion. Like, you want it to be good. Yeah. You, you love it no, to exactly, be good. No, exactly, yeah. yeah. That's, that's the one thing that I always like to get across is that I never go into a movie being like, this is going to fucking suck. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, I hope this sucks. Like, why why would I mm-hmm. spend, what is it, $23 to yeah. see a movie now? Mm-hmm. Why would I spend that money to go and hate my life for two hours? I remember there was one episode a while ago where... You, uh, Boozy said something like, well, I'm not going to go into the movie hoping it sucks. Nobody does that. And you're like, absolutely, people do that. Yeah, right? and people do do that. <laughs> there there is a lot I, of people I think that Boozy's that. guilty of that. And yeah. I think Diego's guilty of that. Uh, that was... Um, and I've been guilty of it before. Ouija, Ouija. too. Yeah. yeah. I've been guilty of it before, but I made a conscious effort to try and not do that with yeah, the after, podcast. After Ouija, too. That's that's what I was... I was like, yeah. you know what, Mitch? And that's why I don't watch trailers very much anymore, because I don't mm-hmm. want even the slightest opinion going into anything. So. Yeah. I feel, I think ever like everyone is guilty of that to, oh, at yeah. some at some point in their life, but uh, like me with but, Star Wars. Yeah, okay, because I don't want to rip your head off today. You don't like Star Wars? <laughs> he, the new, well, the the new ones. Yeah, oh, I want to hate them all. So you and you, I do. You hated the Force Awakens. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I love that movie. Yeah, <laughs> and, it did nothing uh, for me at all. 
Yeah. And well, I'm, I'm impartial. Yeah, we're a horror podcast. Let's not get <laughs> yeah, we won't go into Force <laughs> yeah, Awakens. We'll get off it. Um, but yeah, that's a good as good time as any to just get into what we've been up to this week. So do you want to go first, Diego? Sure. Actually, Jeff probably I, has the most. I have some. Yeah, because I, I, now that we're friends on Facebook, I, it's like, yeah. Jeff is watching this. Jeff is watching this. Well, he had his testicles Oh, yeah, that's removed, true. That's why you're so. in. Yeah, okay. Are you okay with us talking about that? Well, it's been <laughs> it's mentioned a few times, so... No, it's fine. It's a all good. All good. <laughs> um, so I didn't watch anything new, but I revisited a bunch of things. Um, I watched Don't Breathe for the first time in a long oh, time. I've been wanting to rewatch yeah. that one. Have it, you seen that, Jeff? Yeah, I love that show. It holds up, yeah, even though awesome. it's not that old. Like it's just it's. I forgot how good that movie is and how good. What's his name? Um, they're making a sequel, correct? I think so. He's well. He's uh, <laughs> originally they were options. saying that they were going to be doing a Don't Breathe sequel because apparently they have an amazing idea for it. But now he held the <clears> director <throat> Fede Alvarez held a poll. About if people would rather see Don't Breathe 2 or Evil oh, Dead 2. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the Evil Dead remake, which well, was that, fucking that, awesome. That's a yeah. no-brainer. Yeah. yeah. And, of course, people want to... It's crazy that people want to see an Evil Dead 2, though. It shows how good that first one yeah. was. Uh, cool. So, yeah, Don't Breathe. What's his name? Well, who are you thinking? Oh, I don't remember his name. The, the Dylan the, Minnette. No, the guy plays the antagonist. Oh. The blind guy. I can't remember his name Fuck, either. and I always forget his name. If he can't see me, I can't know who he is. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> no, that movie, that movie's still great. I, I still love the twist and, like, the really gross part. It... Which I, do, I still, I still, I still don't want to say just in case nobody no, sees it. Yeah. What twenty fifteen? Stephen like, Lang. Stephen Lang. That's it. Yeah, I love Stephen Lang. I don't think he's in enough. I, I wish he would have been Cable in Deadpool two. To be honest, no. yeah, I, I could have seen him being he, Cable. Yeah, he'd be a good Cable. But Josh Brolin's also fucking awesome. I know, but I, I just love him as Thanos. I more. just listened to a podcast with Josh Brolin on Mark Maron, and he just the whole, like there's like a half an hour where he's talking about all the drugs he did when he was a teenager, and I was like, this is amazing. And he's talking about he's like smoking heroin and shit. Smoking. Like heroin. he was actually doing because all apparently all of his friends from the eighties are dead. Like, cause they were all in, like, punk... He was in a punk band and shit. I'm like, I had no idea about Josh Brolin. Well, yeah, if you're smoking heroin when you're 14. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, uh, Sorry, I didn't try. Was Stephen Lang actually up for the role of Cable? Or you just... He was, just... Con- he was considered. Really? Oh, yeah. I, did, I didn't wow. know. I think I, he's a little too old. Yeah, I think... And I think that's why they didn't go for it, because yeah. I think they were like, we want somebody who's not that old. Right. Yeah. So... Bro, I think Brolin's just perfect. For, Brolin's perfect for, like, Marvel, though, yeah. like, in general. Yeah. Um... Uh, Dark Man, rewatched that yes. for the first time in ages. Still love that movie. I, that's a movie that I think it's. Oh yeah, the v- and that's why I watched it actually because I remember I, I saw the VHS in my head. I'm like, I have that on Blu-ray. I need to rewatch that. That's still one of my favorite Liam Neeson roles. Oh, it's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And I think it's 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 an underrated movie that you know, like I don't think enough people have seen like to this day. Okay, was that before or after Schindler's List? That had to have been before. It, ha- it yeah, was before. Yeah, she was, this okay. was 94. Yeah, and the, uh, Darkman was 90s. Because yeah. it was like, there's no way you could go no, with that you can't role <laughs> after Schindler's <laughs> List. But at the same time, it's weird that they, they got him for Schindler's List after Darkman. Yeah. Yeah, that is. <laughs> but I guess you don't see him like, that we, often. Steven Spielberg's like, I loved you in Darkman. I want yeah. you to play this guy in a, in a Nazi Jew movie. Yeah. Hey, Sam Raimi. <laughs> No, oh, Raimi, I was like, yeah. I was like, Sam Raimi didn't do Schindler's List. No. That would have been a much better movie. Though. That would have been superior. <laughs> hey, that was a great movie. <laughs> um, I, I watched, This isn't horror, but I rewatched Lock with Tom Hardy. Yeah, we gotta stop doing that, but keep. But going. that's that's a good movie though. It's a great movie. Have you seen Lock? No, it's, I've actually never heard of it. It's, it's Tom awesome. Hardy in a car for an hour and a half. I got it on Blu-ray <laughs> if you want to borrow it. It's fucking great though. Like it's it's a bottle up. It's a it's a one man play. Yeah, really? it's, it's literally just him. It's kind of like uh, phone booth. Phone booth. No. Um, I'm more so thinking like 127 hours. Like, yeah. But he's in a car and just his life is unfolding while he's on the phone. Oh. And it's just, it's an acting clinic. Yeah. It's, he's so good in it. And like, that's the one movie because like Tom Hardy's been guilty of doing like the mumbling thing in yeah. lots of movies. This one shows that he's a great actor. Yeah, it's fantastic. So it's like a mobile version of Phone Booth? Yeah. Kind of, yeah. I don't Which you to... love, right? I love yeah, Phone Booth. Yeah. Phone booth. yeah. <laughs> Um, this is gonna be weird having a guest on here who actually listens to us. <laughs> and I remember everything too. Yeah. So <laughs> you um, remember that I gave Alien a five out of ten. Covenant? How yeah. can you forget that? Yeah. <laughs> After <laughs> shitting on it, I will never forget that. I wish I could. <laughs> Sorry, Diego. Go ahead. Um, been playing some games. Um, everyone who's been listening knows I'm a Castlevania fan, and how I was on Air International the Castlevania episode. The one of the creators of Castlevania has been making this game called Bloodstained something i think it's shattered memories maybe but it's been it's been in kickstarter it it like broke a world record for like fastest kickstarter goal reached and it still has no release date but a bunch of the old castlevania guys made a new game that's it's basically there's a new castlevania game it's 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 just not castlevania but i've been playing that today actually i downloaded it and it's fucking awesome um like, like, do you, are you a video game fan big time yeah, like, yeah did you play castlevania uh the, yeah the old ones okay well it's 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 like it's 16 bit so it's it's literally like it's Castlevania 3, basically, but on PS4, and, like, 
they they oh that's awesome yeah that, that's speaking my language yeah. i love castlevania 4 was it on super nintendo yeah yeah, yeah. 4, 4 was fucking I, awesome IV or whatever yeah. it was uh no it's it's, it's roman it's, numerals yeah, yeah. Fucking degenerate. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, it's fantastic. It's it's literally retro. I can't. I it, unless it's uno dos tres qu- cuatro. I don't know what it is. It's fine. Welcome to Canada. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Even the government hasn't said the that first yet. <laughs> Isn't do you guys remember the scene in Simpsons Eleven of Troy where Bart's in with all the tigers? Oh, and, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like trying to think of Roman numerals. And, oh yeah, yeah. Rocky yeah. one, Rocky two. Adrian's revenge. Yeah. 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 Sorry, um, I, th- I thought you were Bart Simpson essentially. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's awesome. So if anyone likes Castlevania, it's. So, uh, I guess I'm just confused. Why would they make a new 16-bit game? Because this one, like, it was part of... It was just one of their, their Kickstarter goals was, like, if we reach this much, we'll also make this okay. to, to kind of tie people over until the actual game comes out. But it's a full-on game. It's not like a an hour demo or anything. It's it's They flat-out went and made a whole new 8, 16-8-bit game. Huh. And, it, no, it's, uh, it's the main guy who made Castlevania and, like, the main um, composer, so it's all the same music and everything, Oh, that too. music was sick. Yeah. And, like, just, like, basically the same gameplay and everything, and it's awesome. And it's on PS4, Switch, and Xbox, and I got it on PS4. So. Perfect. Yeah, and that's about it for this week. Sweet. All right. I did uh, some things. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'm going to take care of mine, because, surprisingly enough, I didn't watch anything. So, I, but what? I got to Yeah, I know, that's crazy. But, Court, uh, I'm going to go first, though, because I know Jeff's got a lot. Uh, first thing is Courtney and I went to Edmonton over the weekend to see her favorite musical act, Bonnie Vare. And while we were there, I had plans to get a half sleeve tattooed. Um, so I went for my appointment and that didn't work out because he had the, like, this is a guy we're going six hours away. He didn't have a reference of my arm. So it just ended up not fitting on my arm very well. It didn't look good. And he basically told me, he's like, don't do this, man. Like I can do something better than this. And for me, like, that's amazing. That, like, a tattoo, mm-hmm. he could have made a killing right there. He could have made money just Yeah, to, just yeah. by doing it, he's just like, no, he's like, I know that's such a good spot on your body. You don't want to, re- you, uh, you don't want to f- fucking waste it. Um, so I was a little bummed out that I wasn't going to get anything. So just on a whim, he was like, do you want something else done, like, small? So he added to my horror leg, and I got the Bates Motel tattooed on my leg. Nice. Uh, have you, you haven't seen it yet? No. It's on Instagram. Uh, you don't have Instagram. No, sorry. Check this out. Oh, that's fucking awesome. Yeah, it's all fucking... Yeah, I'm fucking really stoked about it. And he did it in, like, 20 minutes... Or he drew it up in, like, 25 minutes. It's a house, but, yeah. like, he's he's an unreal tattooer. So I just want to say follow Chris Benson and these CB tattoos. And that's cool that he, like, he was like, I don't want to, like... Yeah, that's amazing. That, that's that's an artist. Like, they don't want to fuck it up and just to get money. Cares, like, 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 yeah. yeah. He, like, and that's the thing. He's not... Like, this shit's on you forever. You don't want to regret a tattoo. Like, that's uh, one of the worst things you can do, so... Some of the, some of the tattoo artists get a little too far that way, though. Like, yeah. I, I remember when I got the this one. Um, Did you forget which arm it was on? Well, I have two. Oh. I, I didn't remember which tattoo <laughs> I, mean, I didn't see that one. <laughs> yeah, I was waiting in line, and uh, some girl, I think, wanted to get... Is that a... T- what are they? Sw- swastika. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, th- I think it's a swastika. Yeah, that's, that's what they're calling it. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. It's, it was a mistake. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Continue. No, it's okay. Uh, it's not a swastika, by the way. <laughs> no, I, that's not the technical name. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, it's it's a Led Zeppelin tattoo. Yeah. But anyways, when I was in line, there was a girl in front of me who wanted to get uh, like wildflowers. Yeah. And the tattoo artist is like, oh, that's beneath me. Get the fuck out of yeah, my shop. That pisses yeah, me off. I'm just like, that, yeah, that pissed me off too. And, and he's like, we're artists. Like, you think that's what, what my art represents? And I was like, well, quick question: Was that Tandrix? Yeah, it was it? Absolutely, Mike it was Thompson, Tandrix. That piece of shit. It like, might have been. I don't know. It, yeah, See, that, that's the Tandrix shitty thing. Is fucking garbage. Because it's like there's one thing of just being a dick, and then there's one thing of being like, I don't want to ruin your arm. No. Yeah. Like, well, and that's like my other friend. Like he, he's a, uh, he's a huge str- uh, strung out as his favorite band of all time, and he just wanted an Astrolux. Like that's their symbol. It's not even like the band name. It's just like what you have there. Like it's a symbol, <laughs> and the uh, Tantrix wouldn't do it for him because he's like. I'm not going to put on something that you're probably not going to be into in 10 years. Well, fast forward 18 years later, he went and got it somewhere else and he still loves it. Like, it's like Fuck that. That's yeah. the thing. Though. It, the difference is if it just doesn't work and they think that they can do better, that's completely different than saying... Someone just you're, being a you, dick. Yeah, I, I wouldn't wear that on my body, so fuck you, you're not getting it on yours. Like, that's such horse shit. Well, yeah, like with you, he was kind of making... He, he didn't think it was proportionate to your No, arm. yeah, he's, he didn't yeah. know that I was such a big guy. Like He's yeah. like, man, I had no idea your muscles were that huge. And yeah, he, he did not say that. <laughs> I was about to say fuck off. Yeah. Like, there's no way. <laughs> but, but but when I heard that, it was it wasn't that. It was like this is my art, and you are disgracing me for even. Yeah, fuck yourself. And I was like, do I even want to come here? But twenty years later, he still sucks at tattooing yeah, too. Fuck That's, him. Yeah. Um, one one last thing I'm gonna say though is, uh, how was the concert? 
it was good. Um, I don't love Bonnie Bear, uh, but I think it's just not really my style of music. But knowing that Courtney was crying the entire time was enough for me. The whole trip was for her. Like, I surprised mm-hmm. her with tickets, and her it's a gift for her putting up with my shit. She loved it. He was amazing. It's just that's it's not my type of music, you know? Like, yeah. It was entertaining, though. Like, I will say they had two drummers, and those fucking drummers were unreal. And they were doing, like, they, they beefed. If you listen to Bonnie Bear, you're like, how, how are the drummers? They're like, what do they do? They were unreal. Like, the, the musicianship across the board was amazing. Um, yeah, it was pretty cool. Courtney loved it. That's what's important. How were the visuals? Were there any visuals? Really involved? crazy. Yeah, like, I, I could imagine. Acid. Acid. Yeah. This pyro, uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, no, just, <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, no pyro. But, like, yeah, visuals were straight up acid trip. Even like, air horn. <laughs> no, not that type of show. But, no, yeah, it was cool. It was a fun trip. But uh, And one last thing, actually, that, or two last things. Uh, I went to, in Edmonton, there's a local DVD shop. It's called The Lobby, the last movie rental store, the, the last video store. And it's basically, you, you go down into this dank-ass basement on White Ave, and he's got, I, I would be remiss to think that it's not his collection. Like, he's just, this guy's got this unbelievable <clears throat> horror movie collection. It's a horror movie store. And it's just wall-to-wall horror movies, and you rent movies. They have, like, seven movies, seven bucks, whatever. And I was like, it's so cool to be in there, because I was just like, it was my wet dream that plays. That might be um, a good idea for you, actually. Oh yeah, exactly. I could rent out Green Lantern. Yeah, um, make some money off the Craig. Yeah, Jesus. no, but I uh, yeah, but I ended up picking up. He he makes his own shirts as well, and he designed. There's I'll show you guys afterwards, but um, the little drawing that Quint makes in Jaws of the shark eating a person. I got that on a shirt. And oh I, nice. Yeah, just a, it's just a little reference. He's like. He loved, he loved that uh, it was going to someone who knew what it was. Because he's like, people have bought in that shirt and don't even know what it's, it's from Jaws. Cool. But yeah, that sounds cool. Um, one last thing I'll get out of the way quickly is everyone knows I'm a big fan of Ghost. The band uh, Ghost, they put out a new album prequel yesterday. I'm going to talk to Jeff about this because I, I held off on Facebook. So I want to know what your, what's, your, what's your deal. First of all, I'm just going to say. What's your deal? <laughs> I'm going to get my opinions all the way first. I was extremely hesitant for this album. I wasn't excited for it because uh, the <coughs> lead vocalist who has gone by Papa Meredith 1, 2, and 3 changes every album. It's the same guy, um, and he's now Cardinal Copia. Uh, he's changed his... He revealed his identity, and he's now... Everyone knows he's Tobias Forge, who's just like a music jockey somewhere. Um, but I didn't like that. I didn't like that we knew who he was now because I liked the... The illusion? Yeah, the illu- I, I just liked them being something else like and they call all their band members are titled nameless ghouls and it's been rumored that they've had very famous musicians take the stage with them like dave Grohl has apparently played drums with them uh guitarist of mastodon um apparently they've had like a lot of people come through and just put on one of the masks and they play with them um because they're just a band that loves cult 80s metal like 70s and 80s metal and normally i would think that that's i'm with you on the fact of like i hate throwback <laughs> shit and i hate cashing in off gimmicks and that's what i initially thought when i first heard ghost but they became for lack of better words a religion for me like i i love them and i love their their they capture the spirit of halloween which is the most important thing for me is as a horror movie fan they have so many horror references in their music in their stage show um and i previously to this album the singer tobias fired the entire band he got rid of all of them and i was pissed because i was like well why would you do that when you put out three great albums and like a good ep with these guys but then the more i thought about it, it was like that was always the initial concept for the band is that he was going to have rotating musicians and they just never really did that so he completely started over i was like this is gonna suck he's they're now getting popular like it like i've been a fan of them for seven years something like that so like it was it was a bummer for me thinking that they could change so much, but they put out this album and completely proved me wrong. I fucking love it. I've been listening to it nonstop since it came out yesterday. I listened to it 12 times yesterday. Jesus. I didn't stop today. I just, I love it. But the thing is, on first listen, I didn't like it. I was just like, it's kind of boring, but in natural ghost fashion, it grows on you. Um, I'm sure your neighbors love you. Yeah, I know. And like, that's I just got the satanic shit playing all the time. Twelve but, times on loop. Yeah. Oh, I love it. But uh, yeah, no. So I highly recommend it. Once again, the band is called Ghost, <laughs> and the album's prequel. Jeff, what's your deal with Ghost? <laughs> or do you just they just don't do it for you? Well, yeah, they don't do it for me. But with Ghost, yeah, I have a few metalhead friends, and once every two weeks, they message me and like, I've, you guys got to you sorry, you have to listen to blah blah blah. And about it, three years ago, Ghost came my way. Yeah. 
And whenever that happens, I just power through like one or two albums. I don't know. Yeah, they, you're right. They didn't do it for me. To me, they, like they go halfway on everything. Like for the drama, they go halfway. For the theatrics, that they do all the way. The the riffs halfway is like what you want them to be. And I just find myself again. I haven't heard the new one. Yeah. I just always found myself wanting to listen to a metal band who was good. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> no. Like, so were you? Did you ever like Blue Oyster Cult? <laughs> Yeah, I like Blue Oyster Cult. And even like you're a Zeppelin fan. Like, there's so much Zeppelin shit in there. Like, I don't know. I I normally like I thought that they were boring when I first heard them too. I like you know, and expect especially when you look at them back in the day. Like uh, Papa Meredith would wear the Pope hat. Oh, I that, know, I know. That yeah. pissed me off when he like. That's why I'm like, I don't want Cardinal Copia. I want the Pope hat. Like, but now I'm like, I get it because he's like t- touring with this constantly. <laughs> it's probably annoying to wear the shit on your head. Um, but no, I, I totally get that this band is not for everybody, but they are an awesome band okay. and it blows my mind that you don't like them. <laughs> no, because I think that no. you're, you're like a target demographic for them. Why? Me? Because, yeah. Well, you like rock and roll. You, you like old school metal. <laughs> yeah. I, I, man, I, I really think they're, they have some chops, but they send them in a weird way. That's all like revolving on the gimmick. <clears throat> It's very simple. So yeah, like, and like I, I feel like it, it's all centered around this the horror gimmick, and I, they don't let themselves go off the chain. So yeah, I mean maybe the new one is more interesting. I think I, you'll I find, find it actually more interesting. Okay, if you haven't listened to it yet, I'll show it to you afterwards. Because it's like it's like uh, I don't know, like it just it comes. It, so they send out their sound, and they don't like go too far. And yeah. then when it kind of a lot it, of people find it boring. That's what I yeah, yeah. I'm trying to avoid that word, but yeah. I'm, show them the saxophone solo song. Yep, yeah, like that. There's two instrumentals oh. on this album, and like they sound like straight up old le- like old Zeppelin songs. And okay. there's a fucking ripping saxophone. It's actually song. super fucking it's, good. It's, yeah. yeah, no, like in this album, like they're shredding and shit now. Like it's really. Yeah, it's, All right, tell you what, I will give the new one a shot. Give you. it an honest shot. Okay, I will. I, I totally could see you not. I could, I totally get people not liking this band, but I just like it. Kind of blew my mind because I thought that you would have been one of the ones who were smart enough or could understand it. <laughs> no, I'm an idiot. <laughs> See, like I'm, I, I like Ghost. I, I don't love Ghost. Like Mitch, I, I haven't you met anyone I'm, who loves Ghost as much as Mitch. That's he, it's, he loves it. It's also <laughs> weird that I like them as much as I do. I know because like I don't listen to any other music that's kind of like it. No, <laughs> I like I like Ghost, but like for me, like I prefer my metal to be like I don't know. Like, do you listen to Dylan Escape Plan at all? No, have you? I, I, I know Dylan. Yeah, like they're like I. I, I, I know they're those Different guys are metal. really talented. Yeah. They're just not my bag. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I that they're definitely they're mm-hmm. another band that's definitely on everyone's bag too because they're they can be they're so insane. chaotic at times yeah. that it's like it's hard to. That's one band I would have loved to see live. Yeah, yeah, I know, and now they're done. Yeah, yeah. I play in an I play in an insane technical metal band with like screaming and shit like that. Yeah, but not as as not Dylan. No, no level. but it's it's weird that I would like Ghost as much. Yeah, as I, yeah. But for me, it's that it captures the spirit of Halloween and and horror. Yeah, I just it. I get a different vibe from it than I do from any other band. Yeah, and I bought the Satanic Bible after listening to them, so I think Are you it's serious. I think it's working. <laughs> <laughs> like, I fucking you I love Satan. There's now. like subliminal messages in the music. Well, I don't care. They pretty much spoon feed you the the yeah. messages. Satan, <laughs> Satan, ghost. Satan. Yeah. yeah, I love Satan. So, all right, that's everything. That, I got. That's the devil coming out of you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Jesus fighting off because yeah. he knows I I was born a. Clean Christian boy. You know what, Mitch? I'll listen to the Ghost album and I'll talk about it on So Be It. Fuck, you're gonna rip it apart. Aren't you? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> no, don't give it an honest chance. I will. I'll try to like it. Yeah, give, we'll give it an honest chance. I'll try. Yeah. All right, you go. What have you been up to, Jeff? You testicular Free challenge, less, less motherfucker. <laughs> uh, for if you haven't caught it, because they've been so subtle. <laughs> uh, I got the. I've lost the uh, capacity to reproduce as of Friday. Um, at yeah. least it happened. Uh, it didn't happen by itself, like just of old age or something. At least, at least. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, dinosaur. Yeah, I don't. I think. I, yeah, it was about five years before that would actually take effect. But so that would have been 1922 then. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm like five years older than yeah. you. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's a weird thing because yeah, the doctors. It's 15 minutes. They were bashing Trump for the, the whole time. Like, can you guys like talk medically, even if yeah. it's bullshit? Be like, like just medical jargon that. Even, There's like, a time just, and a place. Like, I mean, like, I know it's a routine <laughs> thing. But anyway, so yeah, I was laid up. A uh, lot to watch. I'm going to keep everything as concise as I can. First of all, I was, because I, I really can't forget this, Mitch. Okay. I was super thrilled to run into someone on my Facebook that uh, he, he posted a picture of his video collection. And in the background, <laughs> I zoomed in. and Jeff's the guy who zooms in when he sees collections. Oh, yeah. What's he got on his I shelf? had to find one shitty one, and I found the, the shittiest one I could find. I found the only other person that bought Green Lantern. 
<laughs> so yeah, Mitch is not the only one. And yeah, th- this is a guy. Let's call him Greg. Greg. <laughs> yeah, it's, Greg. I like it. Let's call him Greg. So oh, the G, not a C. He, he. There you go. Huge uh, incognito thing. So Greg's a guy I used to work with in my third or fourth job at a department store, and I didn't know anybody. Um, so one day someone told me about this Greg guy. I'm like, oh, you, uh, did you know? They told me that basically Greg's a amateur film critic, which was really cool for me to listen to here because I didn't know anybody there and I thought we could bullshit about movies for like the whole shift, right? Yeah. So what I didn't know was like, yeah, he, he ran a uh, amateur site. Uh, it's called Greg's Cinema Corner. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I, I talked, so I went up to him and I, I remember I'm like, okay, I got to kill some time. Maybe this guy can help me. And what I didn't know is that he is so like, obsessed like masturbatory about him being a critic that you can't talk to him on a normal plane about movies so i would go up to him and it was like 2004 so like a good example would be like hey craig like have you seen dodgeball yeah and he would be like yes i've seen dodgeball and i would be like yeah what'd you think uh well i thought it was a little subpar what did you think and i would tell him my opinion and then he would actually go into like a review on the floor of like of dodgeball like he would talk to me as a review so he would be like well what you didn't get was the subtext of the uh you know dodgeball oh represents god. the uh, aristocracy of the, oh my god yeah, and uh and what maybe you didn't get is ben steeler's character represented i don't know stalin and <laughs> jesus and, and i'm just like holy shit did you like it yes i don't know did you like dodgeball it was over my head you should have asked him what he thought about american pie 2 I showed him. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then I, we brought up Man on Fire. Like, that was another thing. Yeah. He, Man on Fire, he explained to me in extremely complicated terms. So if you ask him about anything, he, he goes straight to... He sighs first, eh? I've noticed that because I watched a couple of his videos. He does the other thing oh. where he goes, Well... <sighs> glad you asked, you. Yeah, exactly. I'm Do just, you have time? It's like 3 o'clock and we're by, like, a furniture section that nobody's shopping in. And, uh, yeah, he's doing, like... Yeah, like, speeches on... Anyways... One is, uh, you know him too? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Both, that's what he's, <laughs> that uh, Jeff showed me a video of his. I'm like, I know this oh, fucking asshole. Fuck. He's coming to HMV all the time. Yeah, I've been to so many movies on opening night, of course, <clears> where <throat> he sat in front of me and whoever I was with. And like whoever I was with, we'd always just be like, are you fucking hearing this guy? Like, oh. have you listened to the words that are coming out of his mouth? Like, like, so where are we getting it with this besides oh. being like, I want to give him a swirly and nuggie him? Oh, no kidding. He has zero self-awareness. And like he would talk the same way about Mystic River yeah. as he would about uh, Enemy of the State. Yeah. You know, or so, like, and, and it was always a five-minute speech, and then by that point, when I, when I would offer my opinion, it would mean nothing because the review was already in, and I'm just a commenter under the review. So I'm on his website right now. It's driving me nuts. He used it's to come in fucking now. unbearable. He gave Fifty Shades, 50 Shades Freed one and a half stars, and you're giving me shit for giving the Alien five. No, if, trust me, I love to give Craig shit. Yeah. He used to come to HMV every morning with a Dairy Queen Blizzard, and he would talk. I would hear him talking to customers about movies. Oh, I he talked to customers. Oh God, he was sucking customers in. I want to see what he that's gives not surprising at all. He, oh, he that, gave Tomb Raider three and a half. Diego, that was probably Midtown, right? Yep. Yeah, because that's where we used to work together. Yeah, I was, I was a manager of the HMV in Midtown. For oh, me. God. Anyway, so I, I was happy to find out that I found someone else who liked Green Lion <laughs> and actually owned it. Yeah, I and, should be friends with him. And you guys should probably be best friends. <laughs> um, but yeah, other than that discovery, which was huge, um, uh, I guess, sorry, to give a reference, it'd be like, like as a music critic, if... Someone talked to me about Soul Asylum, and I went on a five-minute speech. Yeah. You know, or Skid Row. What you yeah. don't understand about Skid Row is... <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, anyways, it was unbearable, and I'm glad he's the only person I've ever met like well, that. So you see, if it depends how much Sebastian Bach injected that day. Exactly. <laughs> what the leather pants signify is the male puritanical nature of me. <laughs> <laughs> like, fuck yourself, Greg. Um, Greg. <laughs> I think actually, I may have slipped up and said the wrong. I name. think you did. Whatever. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I did watch a lot of movies, and all of these actually are pretty much Mitch picks because um, I don't have anybody else who suggests movies. So I just went down the list, and first one I went through is Backcountry. Ooh. Yeah, okay, let's hear about this. That's a beloved <clears throat> favorite of ours. Of no, I, it's it's cool. I, what I, when I was watching it, uh, for those of you who don't know, it's about a couple of girls on hike, and there's a black bear, and it's um. 
we had the the, the director. writer director on the podcast here. What's his name? Adam McDonald. Oh, you guys have mentioned him how yeah. nice he was and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it, for me, it was really like it resonated big time for me because anytime I'm bored, like I look up fun facts for bears. Yeah. Oh fuck. Bears are like have the craziest fun facts. Yeah. Like, do you know a grizzly bear can actually uh, their teeth can actually crush a bowling ball? I did not know that, but I believe that <sighs> they're monsters. That just makes it worse. Yeah, yeah. and black bears are fucked because there's no refuge. They can climb, they can swim, they can outrun you. Like every other animal, usually has one thing they can't do. I thought you said these were fun facts. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I'm just. I'll stop with the bear fun facts. But anyways, that, I like that movie a lot. It could have been like a, a found footage thing. <clears throat> you like, yeah they, you. They could have went. Sorry, what? Uh, they probably they could that would have been effective. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, I I, I like the way they picked it. Yeah. Um, it was I thought it was a simply well done. They, it combined the terror of being lost. Yeah. Uh, with the, I, I didn't think any of the decisions they made were poor. I, no, I, I bought I bought them as so a many people shit on the husband in that movie or the boyfriend I guess um, <laughs> because of the cell phone thing. Well, the cell phone and like how he didn't bring a map and everything. Like he's he's stupid. But the thing is. Have you met any man ever? We're all fucking stupid. Yeah, exactly. And that, especially when you're trying to be an alpha male and like impress your girlfriend to the point like it shows he's like gonna propose to her. Well, and and for someone like me, like if let's say I went camping next week, I wouldn't think to bring a map or anything. No, I just I just just one of the things I would be like just immediately just I'd be like I got my phone. That's all I need. But yeah, but I know it. Yeah, exactly. Doesn't it anything. doesn't but work out. There. I also got the phone because my wife's a realtor and she's always on her phone. Yeah. So if I like, <clears throat> she would probably find a way to be on it even in a hiking yeah. trip. So <laughs> I kind of identified even with that. Like I, if I wanted like a, a hiking trip without, I, I can see myself doing that. So yeah. I really like backcountry. Uh, there's, I have, it's kind of like an open water. Yeah. But with that <laughs> fucking scene though. <clears throat> Like that, they in the tent. Or? Yeah, it's insane. That was so hard to watch. That's what I like wh- how I because I was the one who I stumbled across that movie just like looking for new horror movies to watch. I was like, this one looks kind of like a shitty Lake Placid, and like yeah, I love yeah. Lake Placid. And then I when I watched it, I had no idea it was going to be like a great yeah. movie. <laughs> like, yeah, and I was that like, that movie terrified me absolutely. And and I thought because I went in super fresh, I thought it would end. Well, it's based on a true story. Yeah. yeah. In Ontario, actually. and that yeah. Ontario, that true story is yeah. even scarier than what yes. actually. Except happened. the roles yeah. are reversed. Yeah, they, they yeah. switched that. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> I thought I didn't read about the true story until after. Uh, I thought it was pretty crazy how I could talk about the ending and stuff, right? Or, yeah, that's been yeah. enough. Yeah, yeah. Fuck it. when they were um, when he was getting eaten alive, and I thought that would kind of be it, like mostly the ending. Yeah. And then I pressed pause because I had to go to the bathroom and I noticed there was 30 minutes left after yeah. that. So I, I loved her trying to, after that, it was sort of her trying to navigate the situation that's sort of involving the bear, but it's mostly just being fucking lost. Yeah. Um, lost and you've just been through like the most traumatic experience. Exactly. Like, you keep breaking legs yeah. and stuff. Yeah. So anyways, uh, Backcountry, I thought, didn't do much wrong. I thought as far as a bear story goes, it's, it was awesome. Uh, I, I guess the next one is the loved ones. Yeah. Which you Mitch was like, I like that movie. Yeah, you guys, Mitch made. I love maybe, it. Yeah, I love Mitch that movie. loves it. Yeah, I love that movie. I know a lot of horror fans love it. Like, the, I, I've met more people. Who, I actually haven't met very many people who didn't like it. So you weren't crazy about it, though. No, no. Actually, the more I think about it, the more I kind of realize a little value it brought to the, like my viewing experience. Um, I, I, this is gonna be a, a situation where I ask both you guys of like what I'm missing. I heard you say that with Covenant, like. Tell me what the fuck I'm missing. Yeah. You actually were missing nothing. No, I know. But uh, <laughs> with loved ones, I'm like, basically, they, they, he gets captured, he gets tortured, he uh, he escapes. And I, I grant you, the the character villains were yeah. fairly unique in terms of the incestuous relationship. Yeah, which, uh, it's fucking twisted. And it is twisted. And the but, song that, like, I still, I haven't seen that movie in two years, two or three years now, and I can still hear that song in my head, the, I'm my pretty enough. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like, the idea of that, <laughs> while someone's drilling through a skull, is just too yeah. much. And also, like, if, I've had, uh, how do I say this without being a, I know, I know crazy ass women. <laughs> yeah, I know, like, and I, I've, especially this came out in 2009, and I remember I was like, I even knew a girl who kind of resembled this person a lot, and like acted that way, and I think it just scared the fuck out of me because that person. But yeah, I don't know. I'm not going to get it. It's a scary movie. I, th- I just think on the basic level, it's a, it's just a good scary movie. I found it genuinely terrifying that like. I, this was at a time where it, it was riding off the coattails of all the torture porn movies that were coming out. I felt like there was at least dialogue in this movie that like yeah. brought it some kind of significance. I liked um, 
the idea the idea that like it's not just a basic cookie cutter torture porn movie because they show you what she's doing with these people and then she's showing like her little binder of all of her past boyfriends if you want to call them and like i just i thought it was genuinely scary and i think that um a lot of it had to have been from like the time where i was watching this because at this Mm -hmm. at this time there wasn't that many great great horror movies oh like you weren't getting like uh really memorable ones i think one that i saw around that time that was the other one that i saw around that time that was awesome was drag me to hell but like there wasn't very many movies like this like they were all like either sequels or or reboots and um or torture porn movies that i just didn't connect with for whatever reason loved ones connected with me i like the way it was shot too like it, it looked very grim and also he was listening to music that i like <laughs> he was an emo kid like me yes he was um that scene where he's slow motion cutting himself listening to parkway drive <laughs> mitch is like that's me yeah, i was like oh man me too same <laughs> he better survive <laughs> uh yeah like, and i liked how much he fought that's the other thing he too. did yeah like he i yeah. i and i i couldn't get his scream out of my head after watching that movie like it was like he was so effective in that role i thought and so was she. Fair, no, I thought the acting it was great. Yeah. Um, it just wasn't anything amazing for you. Well, to me, the the torture, tor- sorry, the torture porn blueprint is uh, <clears throat> someone finds his way into captivity, and the br- most brutal things happen, and then at the end they somehow escape, and then they apply the same, well, exponentially more brutal measures to the the captor. Yeah. And it's just they always kill them in the most savage way, and to me, this followed the blueprint like hundred percent. I kept waiting for something. Uh, more unique like to bring something different to the genre and it yeah. was following pretty much the same thing that I saw in Hostel um, even the end with the people in the basement the, the, oh sorry that was the one cool part I found where he actually uh, yeah like the, the layer in the, bo- in the yeah. basement was uh, the best element that I found but as far as like yeah and then fu- getting out of there and then running over on the road as she's crawling to me it, it was all kind of hostile yeah but have you seen The Collector uh, it sounds the bone collector? No, no. Just, just the collector. <laughs> Who's in that? Because that sounds really familiar. nobody significant. No, I'm sorry. No, it, they're they're like saw tra- d- trap movies. Yeah, but the oh. uh, the collection is not great. But the collector is act- the first one is actually yeah, I liked it quite pretty a bit. good. So if you, it's it's like it's basically reverse Home Alone mixed with saw. But see, that's things I would I would <laughs> yeah. And that's I the w- best description <laughs> ever. Heard. I would recommend that to someone if they like the loved ones. Oh really? Yeah, like I, I wouldn't recommend if you didn't like the loved ones. I wouldn't. No. I, I, I didn't hate it, but it didn't do much for me. Um, sorry, Mitch. I know, I know you love it. Um, what else you got? Stop. Sorry. <laughs> uh, cheap Thrills. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Love it. No, okay. uh, don't, Cheap Thrills I love. <laughs> okay. Loved Ones <laughs> is the only one on Mitch's list that I was like, really? Um, I love movies where uh, like a bunch of money is planted somewhere, yeah. and then the characters like don't know how to handle the influx of money. Like uh, Simple Plan, <clears throat> Shallow Grave, No Country for Old Men. Like all of these are awesome, and this is sort of the same path, but it's 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 the only one I've seen that has a blatantly dark comedy vibe yeah, to it. Totally, those other ones that I mentioned are really serious, and and I I don't know about you guys, I didn't know where this was going. No, like, no, the first was, time I watched it, no, and I, like I love movies that go from zero to hundred, like, like just like that, and just, yeah, immediately, yeah. yeah. That and it, I don't know, it, it's just so fucking entertaining seeing that, because yeah. it's another one, like, when we did an episode on that, we had people, like, send us in messages, like, what would we, what would we do for a certain amount of money? And it's like, that's always a good, it's always a it's always good, a good platform. question. Yeah. yeah. Like, you can always, there's a price for everything. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I, the ending, I love Pat Healy, too. The guy, him and Ethan Embry, Ethan Embry. are the two main guys. Oh, yeah, I know you love Pat Healy. Yeah, And he was fucking, perfect in Yeah, that. he's so good. And David, David oh. Keckner was really David good Keckner, in that Sarah too. Paxton, yeah. who's a Family Channel star, <laughs> until this. Uh, he did a lot of coke in that movie. Yeah. Yeah. Every 12 seconds. <laughs> <Jealous. laughs> Jesus. Uh, but yeah, like, yeah, Cheap Thrills didn't disappoint at all. Uh, I can't believe that was under my radar. Um, that was a, such a black comedy. And then uh, Autopsy of Jane Doe. Yes. What did you think? Man, again, I went super fresh. Yeah. I didn't know it was fucking Emil Hirsch. And I love Emil yeah, Hirsch. Emil Hirsch is awesome. I was and like, Brian Cox. What happened to you? Because I, like, I thought huge things were happening for Hirsch. Yeah. He did uh, Alpha Dog, which I loved. I and, loved it too, yeah. And then he went into, into the wild. I'm like, this is a so perfect good. path to be like an A-lister. And then Speed and then, Racer. Yeah, and then Speed Racer. But which you know why a, he did that? It's a beloved movie. I, I, I didn't mind Speed Racer. Yeah. Uh, well, he he, uh, he 
got super shit faced and stoned at at Sundance, and he he choke slammed his, his a woman. Yeah, a woman, his what? manager. A, yeah, a Paramount executive. Yeah, it was like his ma- his manager or something like that. He like choke slammed her. Yeah, he, he was all fucked up. And he, his yeah, he was like, "I'm done. sorry, I blacked out." Yeah, but that totally <laughs> derailed his career. Yeah. Holy shit! Yeah, yeah. Like that that was only like a year and a half ago. Like it was like a year and a half, two years ago. It's yeah, crazy. And he was so due for huge things. I know, and I lo- I love him. I think he's great. Like, have you seen yeah. um, one of my favorite movies of all time? Is a movie that's like. 20% on Rotten Tomatoes uh, as Imaginary Heroes. Nope. With Sigourney Weaver and uh, Jeff Daniels. Like, from... Oh, man. Oh, actually, yeah, I don't know. It's a very melodramatic, like, came out around the time, like, Garden State, stuff like that. Oh, I uh, hate Garden State. You hate it, too? I hate Garden State. I, well, I... Yeah. Okay, well, Sorry. Okay, let's keep going. Okay. But, yeah, I was so happy to see Hirsch in there because mm-hmm. I had no... And then, honestly, this was maybe the best acted horror I've seen in a long time. I think... Yeah. They were perfect together. Yeah. I thought. Do, do you guys agree? Yeah, yeah. And I think that, like, yeah. I think I don't know if I. I think it's that it's on Soviet. That I think that this is going to be one that people talk about twenty years down the road. Like, you think it's going to get discovered and it's going to be like the Poltergeist in some ways to some people. Mm-hmm. Like, it's one that's flying so far <laughs> under the radar. Yeah. It is the the only thing that I uh, I didn't like about it, but it's it's kind of a tough spot for them. Is it, it's such a unique uh, blueprint they had for the movie. Yeah. So there was a lot of exposition in the last 15% when yeah. they figured out about the, the, uh, the Sig- signal or sigils the, or the, the, the biblical sigils. passages yeah. and then more importantly the, the witch stuff yeah yeah there was a lot of like okay Cox is now explaining this what's going on in great detail they had to because yeah, it's know. such a fucked up concept yeah. but they also as a viewer I'm like that's a lot for you to understand yeah based on 1633 uh, witch trials yeah, yeah. so Again, the exposition was probably it's something that they had to include, but I wish they couldn't. It was that almost sense. a bit rushed. Well, like they had to break they it had, down, but there's it's not hard for me to believe that the the, the coroner would have been like, yeah, the guy who know all this and everything, and explain yeah. everything to the guy, and then knowing he had to sacrifice himself. I'm like, that's a lot of exp- of understanding based on uh, a very a life of science. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And exactly. then <laughs> this crazy thing happens. He's like, oh, this is what uh, definitely happened. So uh, that's the only thing that I didn't love. That and it's same. It's that's uh, Andre Overdahl, the director. He also did another movie, the Troll Hunter. Have you seen yeah, I, I, I've, yeah, I've, I've seen Troll Hunter. It's yeah. great. Yeah, it's yeah. awesome. Different, different, much different. Yeah, <laughs> then that's what I liked about too. Is like I, everyone's wondering, like, where is the director of Troll Hunter going to go after this? And it's still in the realm of horror, but it's completely different. No, it was it was such an original idea. Yeah, and uh, I wish more horrors would tackle something like that. Yeah, I just think they painted themselves into a corner with the end. Yeah. Um. And uh, and of course I watched Showdown in Little Tokyo. Which Showdown, Showdown in Little Tokyo? I've never seen Showdown in Little no, Tokyo. No, I mean I thought you were pronouncing really? Big that's Trouble a, Little China no, that, and that, that's yeah, that, and that's an action movie. Though, it is it? so racist. <laughs> Wait, is, like, is that the one with Mickey Rooney? N- no, it's with Dolph Lundgren and Brandon oh, okay. Lee. Yeah, Brandon Lee. That's the one. Yeah, Showdown in Little Tokyo. It's and like I never, I always am the guy that gives grandparents passes when they're racist, and I'm always <laughs> the guy that will, like politically incorrect movies and. 20, 30 years ago, I'm like, I'm more of like forgiving. This was too horrible. Much. This was too much. <laughs> Holy shit. I, if you guys saw it, I would have, I actually had to make racist notes. Oh. But oh. you guys haven't seen it, so I can't get into the litany of racism. Yeah. I don't know if we want to. <laughs> May, uh. Well, no, it's like, I'm, I'm not, I'm condemning it. Yeah. But it's just like, this would be like not even releasable, even on like the black web or the yeah, dark web. I know. Let's hear oh. some of them. <laughs> Did you? Okay. Well, it's, it's Brandon a, Lee and Dolph Lundgren. Yeah. And their partners. Yes. And but it cops. So, uh, basically, every Japanese character. So, uh, there's uh, they're trying to solve a murder that happened in Little Tokyo. Right? So, yeah. every Japanese character is a complete piece of shit who's a violent criminal or rapist. So, that's one. So, there's literally not one positive Japanese character. <laughs> uh, and then... So then you're about halfway through, and then Dolph Lundgren sleeps with Tia Carrera. Mm-hmm. Brandon Lee catches the end of it, and he he's half Asian, obviously. Yeah. He continually talks how huge Dolph Lundgren's dick is, because because <laughs> the whole Asians are yeah. all, all Asians are, you know, in all of you know American guys' cocks. <laughs> um, Dolph so, Lundgren's not even American. No, but in the movie is. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Asian woman, and, like, there's a well, obviously every second scene's a fight scene. Asian woman, women are constantly cheering on Lundgren, beating the shit out of Asian men, signifying that he's like the savior for Asian women. <laughs> it's it, and this happens over and over. Don't worry, there's only two more. Uh, 
so he rescues they're spying on Tia Carrera she is held captive by the lead uh, leader of this Asian gang the, the Yakuza sorry oh, and yeah. they see her about to do the uh, Harikari yep. or yeah so Dolph Lundgren who's well versed in Japanese culture yeah. says oh she's about to commit Harikari so he flees and saves her from this Brutus Japanese tradition. By the way, she is captive with the Yakuza Lord and still able to obtain a dagger and form an elaborate suicide ritual. <laughs> and so anyways, good thing the American was there to see it. And yeah. then the last part is the best scene. It's the end. Uh, he literally, at the before the last battle, he puts on a Japanese kimono. Oh, yeah. So I, I hate oh, cultural no. appropriation. I think it gets... Yeah. That's the one it's, thing that gets so annoying. Yeah, my culture is not your fucking prom dress. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like, no, like, I, I just mean like it's the PC thing that people get a little yeah. stupid with. This was hardcore cultural appropriation. <laughs> he put on a kimono and he had a fight in Little Tokyo, a big showdown with him. He slays him on the street. Asian people are cheering. He kills him brutally on the street and then Asian people bow to the American yes Freak. wearing a kimono wearing a kimono and they were like literally bowing him anyways uh, see it <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> is it a good movie it's one of the worst things I've ever seen oh okay <laughs> but Tia Carrera uh, I thought it was naked but it's actually a body double which was oh. unfortunate yeah. uh, but anyways it was the most racist fucking thing ever it's like birth of a nation type thing yeah uh, and that was my that was my laid up uh, movie trek I ended off with the worst movie <laughs> But uh, and then and then of course Monster Squad, which yeah. is the which yeah. we'll talk about, which yeah. is also another one that's like it could not be released today. I don't think it's extremely I have some points politically on that incorrect. Too. Uh, You're uh, absolutely right. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. Yeah. But uh, before that, I have to bring this up now. Boozy messaged me about a week ago saying that he found he has a listener question for us, but he doesn't want me to read it or any of us to know what it is beforehand. Okay. So I'm about to open it. It's an unread message on Facebook Messenger. I haven't even opened it yet. Oh, boy. Um, he did this to Erie International last week, and I cursed him while I was listening in the car because I'm like, this is that's an impossible question to answer when you don't have any time to prepare for it. But here we go. Okay. So this is from Boozy. Okay, listener question for me. Uh, <coughs> the person sending this what? Okay, okay. So, what the fuck? Are you having a stroke? Yeah. Okay, so you know when you're like just fucking hanging somewhere, chilling, like just like straight booling, and you gotta get up and go out, but you got a boner. <laughs> what? <Jesus fuck>. <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> chilling, just like straight booling. <laughs> got to get up and go out but you got a boner and none and not one of those like okay you got to read You're this. crying. I can't, I can't read it. So this is a question from what the fuck? <laughs> Boozy. Okay, this is from Boozy. Okay, so you know when you're just fucking hanging somewhere chilling like just straight booling and you got to get up and go out but you got a boner. Not one of those like oh hey, I got a boner boners. Like one of those dang, I'm two seconds off from shooting rope kind of boners. <laughs> What? what do you do to hide it? Do you do the classic waistband technique? How do you control it? <laughs> Thanks for answering. You're truly boozy. <laughs> There's so much slang there, I don't know. <laughs> he's basically asking... <laughs> what do you do when you got a boner? Someone interpret go. this. He's basically <laughs> saying, if you, if you, you're, let's say you had to go somewhere on like a dinner date or something, okay. and you had a boner, what would you do? That's, that's. I feel like there's more to it than just that. <laughs> no, that's literally it. That's, that's, that's the, it? That's the question. <laughs> I'm straight up crying. <laughs> oh, Jesus, there's so much to take in there. I don't know. When do you guys want to take this one? <laughs> I wait First a little bit until it goes away. Yeah, you guys you know don't wear sweatpants. Like. Yeah, you don't wear sweatpants. What I would do is, actually, I can bring this back to my circumcision story. <laughs> and that's what, when I when I got circumcised when I was 14. I was told that I couldn't get a boner for three days, so I just piled up and watched Vin Diesel movies. So I would, uh, and you didn't get a boner? No, I didn't. Wow, that's a boner. I know. I know. <laughs> and if you did, that would have told you a lot about yourself. Yeah, exactly. Well, I was curious. <laughs> <laughs> I was Vin curious. <laughs> Even though, I don't know. Yeah, I probably watch Vin Diesel movies. Or um, I, I'm a big fan of stabbing it. Is he okay? <laughs> like, what the fuck? I, he had to have been fucking hammered when yeah, he said that. That was so far from coherent. <laughs> I know. And I, and I what, is, what does booling mean? It just means it's... <laughs> Straight booing. Like, I, what What does that mean, Diego? Hanging around. <laughs> why do you, why didn't you say that then? Because okay. it's boozy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we don't have any answers here. No. Okay, let's go into news. <laughs> that was that was really meta, too. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, here's uh, some non boozy newsies. <laughs>
Hey, what up? It's Boozy's Newsies, and I'm Boozy, and I'm straight boo, and got a mad boner, y'all. <laughs> Big time boner. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I can do. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, that's, that's more than enough. That was frighteningly accurate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for Boozy's Newsies, <clears throat> even though Boozy's not here, rest in peace. Um, uh, a couple things. Todd McFarlane and Blumhouse have cast Jamie Foxx as Spawn. Which I was extremely stoked about because that was my number one pe- pick for who I'd want to play Spawn. I'm down with that. Yeah, I'm super down for that. Do you have an opinion on Spawn at all? Uh, Besides well, the movie being a piece of shit. Yeah, that movie was such a fucking mess. Yeah, it's uh, awesome. I-, I heard you guys mention how you guys were stoked about Jamie Foxx on a different episode. I- I'm in indif- Only for that role. Uh, sorry? I only want him for that role. Can you guys explain to me? I'm not disagreeing. I'm yeah. just wondering why you guys are stoked for that. Because he has actually said, too, that that's his number one dream role. Like, that's, like, the role that he's always wanted was he wanted to be, like, a black superhero. And he wanted, like, he he's always imagined himself as Spawn. So, for that reason alone, if that person wants to play that role that yeah, bad, like he's I, the right man I think for the he'll job. put a lot of passion into it and everything okay. and actually, like, give it his all. Okay. Now, like, I've, I've liked Jamie Foxx in, in a lot of his semi-serious he's roles. He's super hit or miss, though. Yeah. Like he's, but the yeah. thing is, when he's on, like, I, I think Jamie Foxx has a great movie in him. Yeah. Like, he's done some good movies, like Ray. Like, he was getting... Collateral like, was the tits. Yeah, Collateral yeah. so yeah. good. Yeah. When I've even, like, I because I love dumb comedies, I like him in his comedic roles and everything, Yeah, too. like Horrible Bosses and yeah. stuff. But I but I also want him to be able to redeem himself for that <laughs> steaming pile of shit that was Amazing Spider-Man 2. Yeah. With it, where he played Electro. Electro. Yeah, yeah, that was, fuck, that was, that was terrible. bad casting in general. Yeah. Was he, no. he did Booty Call, too, right? Yes, that was bo- him booty call. He has nothing to apologize for. <laughs> yeah, I always saw that in the story of BHQ. <laughs> um, okay, and then uh, I guess keeping up with the horror superhero stuff is Sony is planning to develop a Morbius Spider-Man oh, the living, spin-off movie. The li- Morbius the Living Venom. Vampire? Yeah, Morbius the Living Vampire. Yeah. They're planning on doing it after Venom. And I guess now they're going to try and redo the Sinister Six. Um, but this one's going to be written and directed by Burke Sharpless and Matt Sazama, who have written Power Rangers. Dracula Untold and Gods of Egypt. <laughs> Gods of Egypt. <laughs> like, I don't know. Power Rangers wasn't fucking terrible. No, but, but I loved how the way that I word like the way I had that. I watched your disappointment just <laughs> rise. <laughs> that's oh, I don't. That's I always like Morbius though. Like in the old animated series, I like I how they I like how Marvel movies are. They're they're, I, they're sorry, not Marvel, not MCU movies, but comic book movies. I guess yeah. they're they're taking. Bigger risks with w- weirder, that's a huge weirder risk. character. I know that's the probably the biggest. That's Morbius? bigger than yeah, like that's a bigger risk than Guardians of the Galaxy ever was. For sure, for like, sure. That's I don't know. <sighs> and that, a lot of people don't even, do. You know who Morbius is? No, sorry, yeah, this is no, all that's, you. That's totally fine. It's that's what I'm saying is that like no one knows who fuck Morbius is. Like he's a. He, he he's seems a, he's a vampire. He basically. seems really out of place in the Spider-Man universe. He seems anyways. he's out of place in Marvel comics in general. Yeah, he is. Like, that's, but they, that's why they're doing that. They're already getting their boner hard about this whole Venom thing. Like, let, let that movie come out first. I know. Please, I know. I know. Okay. Well, then I only have one more thing. It's gonna be a short week. Boozy's the one who does all the the heavy the lifting gathering. on this. Um, but the Crow is dead. Yes, the Crow remake. And uh, Jeff, you're excited about that. Hey? So so. I am too. Love. I was I was so happy to see that film. Uh, by the wayside, that that should not have been made. I would normally agree, but I like the director and writer that they had behind it. His Corin Hardy, who did the the Hallow, and he's also done the upcoming the Nun movie, which hasn't come out, so I can't tell if it's good. But the Hollow is amazing, and Corin Hardy. <clears throat> what I liked about him, I followed him on Instagram for a while, and he's like, he's very passionate about the Crow. Like he loves the Crow, and he loves like the old comics. He loves oh. the Brandon Lee when he wanted to make sure that he does. Uh, oh shit! Sorry, sorry about the fan <laughs> sound. Um, it's hot in here, but no, he he's a big fan of the crow, and I think that. Uh, and I didn't like the casting of Jason Momoa yeah. as the crow. That was my biggest. That was, I just, totally agree with Diego. That that killed it for me. The yeah. Jason Momoa yeah, thing? killed yeah, it. Yeah, he's killed he's, it. he's it, that's the thing. He's not a good actor either. No, and he's that, not, like, like when I heard the crow was being remade, I was like, okay, I'm like, it could be. You know, it could be we all talk, right. We talked about yeah. who we'd, we'd want. I think we both said Ezra Miller. Yeah, because he looks like the, without I the fucking I want like a paint. crow, but in high school after yeah. a school shooting. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> Sorry, Ezra Miller? I'll have to look that yeah, up. Yeah, you're going to disagree hard. <laughs> I think we mostly said it as a joke just because he looks like he's brooding he all like, the time. Yeah, like he looks like he, he looks like the crow, the like, just in general. You just got to put a little bit of makeup on him. Yeah. Uh, oh, 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 boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like we weren't we weren't a hundred percent serious about no. it. But uh, yeah, he plays the Flash in the Justice League. Yeah. Um, but he no, looks more like some like Monte, Count of Monte Crisco or something. Yeah, 
don't know. Either way, like I'm bummed out about it. The only the only reason I'm like I'm the oh, thing is I, yeah that's a <laughs> yeah the, he kind of looks like Boozy actually right there. <laughs> Uh, the reason that I'm okay with this because I yeah I didn't want a crow remake like I'd leave it alone even though that movie's not per- I actually I didn't talk about this on the podcast but like I will rewatch the crow like two or three weeks ago and it like it's not a perfect movie it's not, no by any means not even remotely um, and it c- it could be serviceable with a remake but you know with the amount of movies that we get these days you know exactly what it would be like you you know what to expect and yeah. I don't want that like uh, but I don't know Corin Hardy's pretty bummed out about it I don't know if his creative differences but Apparently it he, had to have been. He's been working on it for three and a half years, and him and Jason Momoa got really close over it, and, like, they were... Apparently, there were some sketches out. There was some, like... Some of his script leaked, and it was amazing. So, it could have been great, but it's not going to be it's anything. one of those now. things that like, just won't happen. I'm, like... Like, I'm a, a huge Crow fan. Yeah. Um, I totally agree with you guys that there's some things that could have been improved on. Yeah. Again, it's like you with Signs. You're, like, almost famous. Like, it was sort of a big thing in my life when it came out. The soundtrack and everything, and and the, there's no gothic kind of movies like that. No. But now it's gonna they would turn so, into like something like Twilight even. Like, yeah, but they've tried so often with the crow, uh, and then I can't think of a worse fucking decision than a fucking Aquaman. Yeah. yeah. He, he, okay, Brandon Lee, I think went down to 120, 130 pounds. Yeah. To play, if you and Diego, I'm assuming you know the comic. Yeah. So in the comic, he's like a tortured kind of emo rock yep. guy right like a guy like mitch would love right? yeah. uh yes. and and that's why brandon lee was perfect yeah. for that and again so a remake like you said isn't the worst idea but better but cast you can't do just that monster that hulking beast yeah yeah so and he would be unhealthy if he tried cutting that much weight which he probably they probably wouldn't make him he, cut that no, much he weight wouldn't, no, they he would wouldn't, never he, tell jason no. Momoa to cut weight <laughs> Like, no. That's what's getting women's butts in the seats. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and he's so closely linked with Game of Thrones and, and all these massive and Aquaman characters. and everything. So, now, like, yeah, exactly. I, I just thought that was so fucking stupid. Well, that he seemed like an obvious choice because he had long hair only. Exactly. <laughs> that's like it's like and girls he, dig him. Yeah, you like know? You, yeah. you know that you can find other actors and make them have long hair. Yeah. Right? yeah. Like look at Nicolas Cage in season yeah. of The Witch. Uh, <laughs> a big part of uh, Eric Draven was he's like he's weak. Mm-hmm. Like Eric Draven, like there's nothing weak about Jason Momoa. Momoa. No. He's like. He looks. If you look at the, there's a picture circulating online. Like he, he's like three times bigger than his his bodyguards. Yeah. Yeah. So and again, he would have made. I'm sure some measures to make it look more realistic. But I yeah. thought it was uh, horror. I'm so glad it's done. Yeah. I would. I was just excited about the fact. Cor- like I, I want to see what Corn Hardy does. I'm looking forward to the Nun because yeah. apparently they've even done test screenings and it's supposed to be pretty fucked up. So yeah. when's that coming out? Uh, is October 20, is it this October? Yeah, I'm pretty oh, sure shit. it's this summer. Uh, or no, it's October, not Fall. summer. Sorry, Fall. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, that's everything for news. So let's go on to the Monster Squad and our main our main feature on the Monster Squad and family friendly horror movies. Welcome to our main feature presentation on The Monster Squad, which came out in 1987 and was directed by Fred Decker and written by Shane Black and Fred Decker. Um, For those of you who don't know, Fred Decker is behind uh, movies such as The Monster Squad, Night of the Creeps, Robocop 3, and uh, Shane Black is the, like, he's done, he was in the original Predator movie that he played Hawkins, um, but he also wrote, like, he started his writing off with Lethal Weapon. The Monster Squad, uh, Last Boy Scout, Last Action Hero, um, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, which is when he started directing as well, and then he directed and wrote the screenplay for Iron Man 3. Nice Guys. And The Nice Guys, most recently, yeah. And, uh, and isn't he doing pr- The New Predator? He's doing the movie The Predator. Yeah. He's ri- writing and directing it. Um, and yeah, so like that's two heavy hitters right there as far as the things that we like go. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I don't know. the. Oh, just, sorry, just one second. The Monster Squad. Squad up. Is uh, the IMDb synopsis is a young group of monster fanatics attempt to save their hometown from Count Dracula and his monsters. Mm -hmm. So with all that being said, we should just quickly get off right off the bat and talk about what we think of this movie. Because obviously this is a beloved favorite for Diego and I. We've talked about multiple times. And I know uh, what swayed me into convincing Jeff to do this for an episode was that he watched it recently. And, uh, yeah, do you guys all watch it recently? I watched it this afternoon again. So. 
thoughts? <laughs> I love it still. It's, 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 you know, it, it's, it was in our, I don't remember if it was the first year or if it was this past year, but it was in, like, I think it was one of my picks for the top 10 movies. You for did Halloween. it for both years. Oh, okay. Did I? <laughs> yeah. Oh, but it's hey. both, yeah. I, I watch it every year. It's for Halloween. It's just one of those movies that I've always loved as like since I was younger because it's, it, it's, it'll, it'll lead into our discussion, but it's a good gateway movie, I think. Um, you know, you're, when you're a kid and you love monsters and stuff, you, all, all you want to do is like fight monsters and learn about monsters and, and experience monsters. And that's exactly what happens in this movie. So you kind of live vicariously through them. It hasn't aged as well as I remember, um, due to some non PC things that wouldn't fly. <laughs> okay. That's what you're getting. And then, yes. yeah, <laughs> so I was going to be like, I think the effects. Are yeah. Great, no, no. The, the, the effects are still, the effects <laughs> and are still the kid, good. The kid, yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. I meant, I meant like, yeah, some of the, some of the content when it wouldn't fly today. Um, but no, overall, I still love this movie. Yeah. Okay. So, like, like we said previously, like it'd be boring for you to just listen to us try and dissect the Monster Squad for the next half hour. Uh, so we're gonna spread the conversation about uh, gateway horror movies and family friendly movies. But Jeff, what made you want to rewatch this one recently? You know what? It wasn't a rewatch. It was a first watch. Really? Oh shit! Yeah. Okay. Well, here we go then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, a friend came over uh, to have beers a couple weeks ago, and he brought up Monster Squad, and I was like, "Oh, I've never heard of it." And he lost his mind that I hadn't seen it. Yeah. So I added that to my list uh, when I was laid up. And uh, that's, I actually double, I did, I watched that right after Showdown Little Tokyo. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So that's, it two, was the first time I saw it. Yeah. So. Two politically incorrect movies. But so what did you think about it then? Really enjoyable. Yeah. Yeah. There was, it was really airtight. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think it's 82 minutes. It's super oh, short. Oh, it's short. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, are we? Am I? Do you want me just to give my opinion? Do you want me to go into it a little bit? Let's or? hear your yeah. opinion. Yeah. Well, uh, okay, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I liked how uh, Shane Black, obviously, he, he dug a few things, like of the of uh, like the lore. So he dug the lore <laughs> and he dug the cheesiness, but he also took it seriously. Mm-hmm. Like he respected totally. it. So it could have been sort of like him, uh, kind of just riffing on like the lore and like how goofy a lot of it is because a lot of it is goofy with Dracula yeah. and the mummy but he had a love for <clears throat> he had a love for it but he also had a love he knows it's cheesy yeah. so there was both sides were equally represented <clears throat> it kind of reminded me of like Sean like you can't really spoof something effectively unless you love it yeah mm-hmm. totally right so like yeah. Shaun of the Dead was like the, it's an awesome movie because they love zombie yeah. movies they did their research yes and, yeah. and they, there's a, obviously I think they all love a the genre love right? and, yeah and that's what I felt when I was watching Monster Squad. Um, and I was worried it would be just kind of uh, a hodgepodge of the, the classic monsters and throwing them at you and letting you just sort of, um, hopefully that you, you have an appreciation for them, but yeah. he, he has a big appreciation for totally. it, sorry, sorry, appreciation for them too. Yeah, and I think the thing, because yes, I love this movie. I, I love it. I've, I've seen it. This had to have been the 30th, 40th, like I'm in between 30 and 40. Like I grew up with this movie. I loved it. Um, I do state it as probably one of my gateway movies that got me into this movie. Eric got me into this type of stuff. Uh, Cause I had obviously seen this before I saw all the classic universal monster yeah. movies. And uh, this was the movie that made me want to go back and watch them. And even at, at a young age, those movies are very, very dry. Like yeah. they're, they're hard to watch when you're that young. I have a very fond appreciation of them now. Like I, I love them. Um, minus like I know you you would post on Facebook stuff about the the mummy like you're asking because <laughs> the, mummy. the mummy in my opinion is definitely one of the flawed aspects of the Universal monsters like that movie is fucking boring as hell if you've ever watched like the the old Universal monster Boris movies Karloff one I think. yeah it's not it's not very good and um but the thing is like Dracula's I still love Dracula Bella Lugosi and I love um the Frank like Frankenstein Bride of Frankenstein sorry I have the, I actually haven't seen Creature from Black Lagoon. And I love Creature from Black Lagoon as well. And uh, I'm actually hoping that you guys will be down for it. In October, I want to go through the Universal yep, Monster sure movies. Because they're also short. They're very accessible. But um, I, there's a lot of great stuff when in there. Going to Universal Studios, you may as well. Yes. <laughs> but uh, but that's the thing. Like what Jeff had said is like you tell Fred Decker and Shane Black grew up with this love. Like clearly their movies of their tra- Like they probably talked about Dracula and Frankenstein stuff in the way that I talk about the Monster Squad. Um, <clears> so it's just passing the horror love through generations. Um, and the other thing that made this movie so effective is the special effects. And you can tell that they really cared about yeah. it. And this was in the prime of like actually going all out for special effects in horror movies. And it's important to note that um, the special effects artists for this, like they were designed by Stan Winston, um, who's behind Jurassic He's Park. He's a legend. Yeah, Jurassic Park, Predator, Terminator, Lake Placid, Aliens. And then um, 
Tom Woodruff Jr., who's, from what I believe or what I've read, is that he kind of became uh, Stan Winston's, like, right-hand man. Like, he helped him out a lot and everything. And he, he ended up doing makeups for Starship Troopers, Death Becomes Her, and most recently, Annabelle Creation, nice. uh, Bright. He did the orcs in Bright, which is a piece of shit movie. <laughs> but uh, Paul Blart Mall Cop 2. What? Paul Blart Mall Cop 2, he was credited for. Huh. It's just sad. Like, it's sad yeah, that they, it's this guy's so, so fucking, promising, and then... Yeah, well, no, but the thing is that they, he's just getting work. Like, there's... You I don't guess see, he's getting paid, but those are no, two, but, truly dude, awful. you do shows. not see that shit anymore, mm-hmm. though. Like, mm-hmm. the, no one does practical special effects anymore, and it's it's a And nightmare. so it's the... Paul Blart needed practical yeah. effects. Well, it's the same thing with how <laughs> well Rick Rick Baker sold. Like he he shut down his studio and he sold all of his stuff because after he had been hired for Maleficent, he's like, I could have done all those special effects in my garage. Like you don't need because it's all CGI and stuff. Like these like the people don't pay for it anymore. People don't like it. Is Tom Savini still getting work? Yeah, but okay, he, good. he but he, I think it's more of a school. Yeah, right? he has a, a full makeup school. He does that and like I think. Um, I could be wrong. But I think he no, he doesn't work on because Greg Nicotero can be does The Walking Dead. They're yeah. they're being kept afloat solely because of The Walking yeah. Dead. In news, we didn't talk about this, but Rick's gonna oh, be out yeah, of The Walking Dead. Yeah, rest in peace. And um, but yeah, like he also did. Uh, <clears throat> but Tom Woodruff Jr. worked on Predator and Pumpkinhead. Like oh, well, some, fuck yeah, some yeah. of the best special effects ever. Yeah, but the what I love about this movie, um, before we go on to our general conversation about family friendly movies and just gateway movies, is that. I while it is incredibly politically incorrect, I think it's kids being kids. Kids, yeah, kids were politically incorrect, and they I, still are. Like, like that's what I, I I totally got these kids when I was little. Like when they were talking the way they were, I was like, that's how everybody talks. Like, like the, you, there's so many times where you see that they can't, they don't represent kids well anymore. I'm like, yeah. that's, no kid would do that. No kid would say that. Like, I that's what I liked about this movie so much is that I felt like it was being honest to me. That's true. Um, but yeah, it, and for me, like what the a couple of things I'll say is that this was my Goonies. Like I, and I still think till this day, like, I'll, I'll take some flack for this, but this is a ten times better movie than Goonies, in my opinion. Like, I agree with you. Actually. Goonies does yeah, not me, fucking me age well. I at agree all. too. And like, uh, I love the Goonies when I was a kid. Yeah, of course, but like, y- Goonies does not hold up on a rewatch like no. like Monster Squad does. And people who are seeing Goonies for the first time, like we we now have Jeff who's saying like he saw Monster Squad for the first time at what eighty seven years old, <laughs> <laughs> and, you're, and you loved, it. No, and you liked it. <laughs> eighty one. Yeah, eighty one. Jeez. <laughs> um, but yeah, like they they go all out with these monsters, and like the kids are awesome. The whole feel of the movie is awesome. It's perfectly paced. Um, the mummy, the dark universe, stole a scene from the Monster Squad, <laughs> like with how they're like they're on the plane. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the thing is too, it's like you know a lot of people who who like worship the Goonies, most of them probably haven't even heard of this movie. I disagree with that. Really? Right? Yeah. Because I've talked to a lot of people who, who's never who've never heard of this movie, but they they've watched uh-huh. the Goonies. If that, I hope you're I hope you're right, because then they can watch this and realize yeah. how stupid they are for thinking the Goonies <laughs> is better. But that's and that's the other thing too is this movie's got probably my favorite fat kid. <laughs> like uh, uh, Horace, did you hate him? Uh, the fat kid? Yeah. That's on my list of notes because like, uh, man, like Wolfman's it, got nards. It's it's one thing. Oh god! Like I was watching this and I was. Okay, like it's one thing to have a friend whose permanent nickname is Fatso yeah. or Fatty. <laughs> Fat so all of those are like colloquialisms, like they're sort of like nicknames in a weird way. This, this is, is a descriptor. Horse. No, it, no, Fat Kid is a descriptor. Yeah. Yeah. He's a kid and he's fat, and that's his name. <laughs> that's so savage. His name's Horace. <laughs> Yeah, but they, call yeah, him but fat they, they just call him Fat Kid. kid yeah. Yeah. And then at the end, he's finally, he takes his like, name My back. name is Horace. Yeah. Yeah. But he had to kill a fucking mutant yeah. to <laughs> take him back. I'm like, that's another level of like bullying. Like, yeah. he, I was like, I was blown away by it. Like, had, fat's or, or ch- like, ch- like, t- uh, we're talking about Goonies. Yeah. Chunk. Chunk, Chunk, yeah. That's is, a nickname. It's a fat reference, but it's, it's <laughs> but it's a nickname. Like, yeah. Fat Kid is just you, an adjective. But, it's, it's so rank. It's true, but uh, but Chunk also like he he presents it to himself because he does the truffle, the truffle shuffle, shuffle and like he shakes his belly up. Yeah, like, he wants him to like him, him yeah, but he, he fights back by like he fights fire with fire. <laughs> if oh, you will. God, I've never seen a movie where like the, what if there's a character that was like dumb man. Yeah. Hey, you know? dumb man. 
Yeah, okay, I, stupid exactly. guy. I've yeah. always thought about that as a kid too. Like watching, like how does this guy get the role as fat nerd? Yeah, <laughs> like, he was cast for fat kid. Yeah, <laughs> can you imagine? Like, all right, you waiting for fat kid? Landed the role of fat nerd. In the hey, mom, I'm, I'm, I'm acting now. Yeah. In the IMDb, it's like his actor name Horace slash Fat Kid. Oh man, yeah. th- no, but there's one guy on IMDb who you'd recognize if you saw him. He's in the new guy. He was in all these other like uh, music videos. He's in a bunch of simple plan videos, but he's oh, always DJ fat Qual. Nerd. Oh no, 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 no he's no. always fat nerd. Really? He's, he's, fat nerd. He's he's called fat nerd. Jeez. And so he's got like 180 credits and like half of them are fat nerd. Oh, God. That's even somehow more harsh. Yeah, it is. And, it, it, and it, I, I agree. It's, it's kind of funny and sad that he had to kill something to prove his worth. Yeah. To, 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 to actually <laughs> My name is Horace. <laughs> Not just kill something. Yeah. Kill like an otherworldly creature. Kill a creature. monster, yeah. yeah. Uh, anyways, that's what I found funny. Uh, the fat kid thing. And then, uh, may I just say, like, those are the bravest cops ever. Yeah. Yeah. No, like they're they're seeing uh Dracula like summon the worst thing. I things. love that scene they're, at the end. They're not only attacking, yeah. which takes huge balls, they're going like fisticuffs. Yeah. I know. They're like running like, like May Lee attack. And the, yeah. the dad's yeah. fighting a fucking werewolf. Yes. Like hand to hand combat. Like, <laughs> like and this cops are in like, oh give me the, like they're going to try to grapple Dracula. Yeah. yeah. Um well, really gotta give them credit. Those are oh, totally. I i that's totally it. and that, that's one of my favorite scenes in the movie because the camera also doesn't break away. There's yeah. just it's Dracula just walking towards the kids with the amulet and yeah. they're he's just taking out cops left, yeah. right, and center. Yeah. And I, I loved it just thinking about like how big of a boner Shane Black probably had writing that scene, being yeah. like, "Yes, yeah. Dracula fuck walks, cops. just fucks everyone up." Yeah, all cops are bastards. I was watching that. And I was thinking of like like Snake in the Simpsons of like yeah. all the cops getting killed. Like, yes, yeah, yeah, totally. They, I think they were all pretty much killed. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So what? What else was funny? Um. Oh, the only other thing that I thought was funny when I watched it was how stupid Dracula was out of all the. The, the monsters he could have picked. Yeah. 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 He picked Frankenstein's monster <laughs> to retrieve the book. Yeah. The most... The, the, the most brainless one. The most brainless... And he has the most empathy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, he has the wolf, the fucking werewolf. But I guess, like, the wolf, like, because like, in his, when he was in his human form, he doesn't want it. He doesn't want to do it. I guess so. It. That's the thing. Just send the Black Lagoon. Yeah. The creature. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> send the whole swamp. <laughs> or those, <laughs> those three witches. The, the, the oh, bright, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, send the whole swamp. <laughs> but he's like, I choose you to yeah. retrieve that book. Yeah. Like, Slow as dumbest. How about you fucking do it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and then, you know, I know the 80s love bad boys. Yes. They, 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 they fucking leather jacket, sunglasses, and dangling earrings. Yeah. Like, <laughs> they made him a little too... Yeah. A little too 80s bad boy. Well, no, like, you know, he took out way too many people. Oh, or yeah. mutants. He killed the wolf man. He killed all the brides. And he killed the mummy. And he made that bully eat that chocolate bar. Yes. <laughs> Like, no, like, he was, without him, they would have been fucked. Yeah. Can I put um, on one key thing about this, too? This movie's rated G. What? Yes. This G? Movie, it's rated G. I would have general. I would have expected PG-13 I would expect at four, least. Like, 14A yeah. minimum, but, like, like nowadays, because that's, a, like, they blow up the wolf man with, a, with yeah. dynamite. And he's, like, and, like, even, man, I remember um, there's two scenes that scared the, like, this is one of those movies that didn't scare me as bad as the one I'm about to talk about, but Ernest scared stupid. Like, that scared the living fuck fuck out of me when i was a kid but like the scenes in the monster squad of like where the kid thinks that the, he says there's a monster in his closet and his dad goes and he, like he opens it up and the mummy's standing That's there a great yeah. scene. terrified yeah. the fucking me it's classic it's so good and then the other one was um the werewolf transformation in the yeah. phone booth where he's like he's gonna kill your son yeah i'm like this is rated g or even in yeah. the in the in the police station where he's like lock me up and he's like yeah, sh- sh- shoots it's a fucking cop like and i love how his, every dial- piece of dialogue he has he like explains who he is he's like yeah and i'm a werewolf now <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's fucking so corny in such a fun way but yeah like that's it blows my mind because there's n- and that's the other thing this is another one of those movies that's been in talks of getting a remake and oh no no i actually i read about it fell apart yeah, it totally. Yeah, yeah two thousand eight. It just kind of. But it's one that you gotta expect that they're gonna take a run at again at some point because it's, it's it's such a great concept. Yeah. I, I actually wouldn't mind. No, I wouldn't no, mind a remake either. But that but that thing you gotta think about like, yeah, I was trying to think of what kind of remake I would like from this. Like, who would I want to write in? Honestly, the guy, the people who I thought of writing it would be like. I'm gonna might be sacrilegious, but like Evan Goldberg. Like, I was gonna say, you know like what? I'd like a remake, but a, Seth Rogen and Evan yeah, Goldberg. Yeah, yeah, no, I I'd like a remake, but kind of aim it, more, aim it told it like 20 like how we like we, all thought, maybe? we all thought 21 Jump Street was gonna suck my name a diff <laughs> 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 and it turned out to be funny but no, like, I'd like like imagine like like 
in the vein of this is the end. I would like yes. I would like a monster mo- monster Squad movie like that. Yeah. Because that'd be that could be fucking hilarious. And it also like because you gotta wonder because the things for these kids, <clears throat> Dracula, Frankenstein, all those classic monsters were their monsters. They're, they're you gotta monsters, wonder. Yeah. Like I know it'd be impossible because of the rights, but like imagine like a Freddy Krueger, Chucky Michael, and Jason. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like that'd, that'd be, be cool. cool. But that'll I, never I think, happen. I think but... the only way to go about this movie would be to aim it for adults. Though. Yeah. Like make. No, it... I agree. Yeah, I don't know. That'd be cool. But also, the Stephen King rule shirt. Like, this movie's just a time capsule yeah. of the 80s. Oh, yeah. So, I saw that shirt. I really want that, I know, actually. Yeah, yeah, I think that people are selling them online. And now, even the fucking, like, the fucking 80s montage is, like, the yeah. most 80s montage. Like, <laughs> well, the music. Yeah. Like, well, we included the music at the beginning of this, but, like, once again, there's a rap at the end. Yeah. A Monster Squad of rap. Of course. Because yeah. that's what every horror movie back then had to have a rap song at the end that had yeah. to do with the movie. Exactly. So, it's clear we all love this movie. Um... Where I want to go from this, do you have anything else to say about it? Yeah. Uh, uh, not, not really. I, I guess uh, I probably should have touched on it more when he first brought it up. It would have been easier. I, I think he had such a clear, Shane Black had such a clear um, embrace of the movie. He could have went a little bit more sarcastic about the characters. He could have made them more easy to laugh at. Yeah. I'm, gl- I'm glad he didn't. That's yeah, all I want to totally. say. He could have went that route. And would have, it would have made age more, uh, it would have been more cynical. And I don't think that would have I agree. I made agree. the movie as good as it was. Yeah. Something I always forget about um, until I hear it every time is uh, Black Dial and Murder samples this movie, eh? Yes. In Nocturnal? Yeah, Nocturnal. Yeah. What, which song is that? Right, it's from Nocturnal going into Death Mask Divine. Yes, and so, that's my favorite song yeah. on the album, Death yeah. Mask. They were just, they were here the night that I was at Bonnie Bear. I miss Black Dahlia Murder. I know. For I miss Bear. fucking Black Dahlia Murder too. That was at work. <laughs> I could, I was like I can't. Believe, what world are we living? Are you a Black Dahlia Murder fan? Uh yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, like the uh, and they like I got snaps of them playing Death Mask. Yeah. The yeah, Eric. Man. Eric sent them to me. Yeah. yeah. But you were swaying in the yeah. gentle breeze. No, I was or... sitting. Yes, of course. <laughs> it, was sitting, all, yeah. it was an all seated. Nobody show. better stand. Yeah, <laughs> oh no! Actually, I didn't bring this up. I'm gonna quickly say this. This is the first concert I've ever been to where the closest I've seen to a fight was one guy telling a guy to get off his phone. Because there was a guy taking a video on his phone, or like, and to be honest with you, sitting like a couple rows ahead of us, he was like looking at the NBA app, and it's like, but here's the thing: you're in a concert where it's like everyone's seated, it's all dark, yeah, there's very heavy visuals. Yeah. It was a, it was a piss off. Like people cheered when they told him to shut the, like tearing mm. his fucking phone off. But okay, anyways, all right. So I want to get onto this. Was obviously that like I state this movie is one of my gateway movies. Um, obviously, Jeff, like I know you were. You've always been like a horror fan, but probably in a more casual sense. Mm-hmm. Like, what what can you state back as like your gateway movies, or what would you? You're also a father now, a father too, I mm-hmm. believe. Yeah, like, it, it, what, have you thought about that? Like, if you're at what, when it comes time to show your kids movies that you love, like, oh, I, I've totally thought about it because uh, kids, like, even at uh, my daughter's uh, about three and a half, she loves being scared. She loves yeah. um, even stupid shows on Netflix. She loves the act of like running away behind the couch and yeah. like being scared. So then I guess after I saw Monster Squad, I Googled sort of family friendly horror. It's like a fucking open market. Oh yeah. Like we if we had any brains, we'd write a script for that. Yeah. <laughs> there's lots of good shit there. But there, I think there's a lot of you could do a lot of good things, but as far yeah. as movies, there's like four. Have you seen Paranorman? Uh, no, <laughs> I'll get to that. Like yeah. I was I was clueless when Tara wrote that. Yeah, but, I love that movie. Uh, I love it. Uh, one gateway, and I'll be surprised if you guys have seen this. I think it's a good great gateway because it's actually closely linked to um, it, it's Return of the Oz, Return to Oz. Return to Oz, yeah. Well, th- even Wizard of Oz scared the shit out of me when I was Re- young. Have you seen Return to Oz? No. You guys should really watch it, or at least mention it in one of your shows because it's they went really fucked up. Yeah. Like I, I know the first one's kind of creepy. Yeah. The next one, they tap into a lot of weird stuff. Like, this is a kid's movie. Enjoy. They were clearly on some horrible drugs. <laughs> um, you mentioned on, on Mushrooms, you've had a couple bad trips. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I think these guys have absorbed all their bad trips and made a movie out of it. Oh, man. I tried to show... I hadn't seen it, and I showed it. It's it's a good gateway horror, because it's... She absorbed it, and she it wasn't too scary, but it was really messed up, man. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, you guys should check out Return to Oz because oh, it, it takes yeah. such a left turn. Fuck but yeah. but yeah, it, it there wasn't a much when I, when I googled it. Mm-hmm. It was like Monster Squad. But okay, here's what I googled: uh, family friendly horror movies. Uh, it was Casper, Monster Squad, Hocus Pocus, 
uh, witches. Uh, the witches. The witches. Yeah. yeah the and and then the, there's you, yeah, there's usually like a slidey thing to like go through all. Yeah. There was no slidey thing. Yeah. They, oh shit. And those yeah. are you just named off like three out of four of Courtney's favorite horror, favorite movies of all time. Yeah. Like, uh, but, and that's, um, she had never seen the monster squad either till last night. She loved it. Cause I'm like, okay, good. Cause he, yeah, she, some of her favorite movies are the witches. Hocus Pocus yeah. is her number she one. Loves that movie. Yeah. Hocus Pocus is by far her number one. It and seems I, every girl loves that movie. Yeah. Yeah. But I like, I totally, I stand by it too. I think that that movie is fucking amazing. <laughs> like, I think it's so much better than a lot of people give it credit for. I watched it relentlessly as a kid because both my sisters loved it. Obviously. Um, they even went as far as dressing them because we had, it was me and my two sisters. They would dress up as the Hocus Pocus witches and they would always dress me up as the fat one. <laughs> fat kid. <laughs> yeah, fat kid. <laughs> and, uh, but no, like, yeah, yeah. And I honestly watch a movie every year for Halloween and Courtney, like she watches it all the time and it's, I'm never pissed off when it's on, but that's a, that's a great gateway movie. But what about you, Diego? We've already done an episode. Well, yeah, on that's this. a thing. And like for me, a lot of it was goosebumps and I'm afraid of the dark. Yeah. Which is so important. That, yeah. And then, um, you know, like I think the big one, was because I was always into like Jason and Freddy and everything, but I was never like into them. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then I watched I watched Freddy vs Jason, and that's what really threw me yeah. into the deep end of everything. And that's when I just started watching, like going out watching every horror movie I could find. And see, you cannonballed though. Like yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah, you, I, you I totally did. Yeah. into the genre. Like that's like I I, uh, I don't know how I came across it. Like I I can remember the first time I saw the Monster Squad is through like my mom's friends kid yeah. had it and it's like i would have never seen this movie if it wasn't for him yeah. like and, and i just i don't i can't remember his name but like it's just crazy how this kind of stuff just happens yeah. um because it clearly played such a huge role in my life um but yeah okay so like a couple that i want to just mention that if you haven't seen it and you're a parent and i don't have kids myself so i can't gauge what what age i would show this i'm show these movies to them at but uh i've shown my nieces i was so excited though when my sister had two beautiful girls that i could one day show monsters inc because i love that movie it's honestly probably my top 10 favorite movies of all time uh that one i saw when i was 10 years old and it was the perfect age i think the reason why that one's such a great family-friendly horror movie is because it introduces the idea of monsters and how to not be afraid of them <laughs> or how they have a purpose and they have purpose a job is, to do yeah their purpose isn't to hurt you it's, it's to, to you. yeah and um you you got some? I said you something. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I thought you were pointing at the beer. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then, so uh, I have that. And then I also have Goosebumps, which is like, came out, I think two or three years ago. Th- Would have been like three years ago now. Uh, the live action version, which I thought was going to be a pile of shit with Jack Black and Dylan Minnette. Um, it's, I don't know. I, I think that's a great movie. I've, I've loved, I loved it. And we I watched, watched it together when we lived together. Did we? Yeah. Yeah, because I've seen the movie a handful of times. I would have never guessed I would have well, liked that's it. That's the first time it. I saw it, because I went out and bought it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, I remember that then. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a great film. It's a great introduction, because obviously Goosebumps played a huge role in mine and Diego's uh, upbringing with yeah. horror. Um, the movie was good enough. Um, <laughs> it's a good way of putting it. Yeah, a couple last things. Monster House, which is another oh, animated yeah. mm-hmm. one. That's, that's a good one to show your kids, and that's not too scary. It's not too over the top. Um, my favorite one probably of them all besides Monsters Inc. is Paranorman, which uh, my sister is going to mention uh, pretty soon here. Um, stop motion Leica movie uh, made by the same people who do Kubo, Kubo and the Two Strings. Oh, yeah, yeah. Not Kuso and the I Two know, Strings. I was thinking about As soon as you said Ku, I was like, <gasps> Kuso. Yeah, and the Box Trolls. And what was the other one that they did? It was just fucking awesome. I can't believe I'm drawing a blank on it because it's probably their best one. Was it the one with the, the buttons in the eyes? Coraline. That's it. No. Yeah, they. Yeah, I think they did. I don't know. No, I don't know. Moving on. Uh, those are some good ones to check out. But uh, I'd like to hear what people think, what they would show their kids or how they, because I know a lot of our listeners have, have kids who they are going to try and show the horror genre to. I don't know how you go about it, but I'll cross that bridge when I get there if I ever do. Um, let's end this off by sharing some stories from uh listeners so first have jeff if you want to do you have yours pulled up because jeff yep. made this post on his facebook and asked his friends and got some replies uh yeah my i guess main reply is from tara mitch's sister who says we've watched this is a hard one to pronounce uh can you take that can I see it P- pen paranorman pa- yeah a, there you paranorman. go Paranorman as a family, and it was great. I would say movies like Hocus Pocus, oh, sorry, Hocus Pocus, <laughs> and Coco, which I, Coco's I actually did, awesome. I haven't seen Coco yet. The I love that. It's a new. Yeah. Oh wait, it's wait, the new, the new people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I'm not sure how horror. Like, there's some like other, Day of the Dead yeah. stuff. Yeah, there's some other realm stuff, but yeah, I'm not sure how horror is. Yeah. Uh, but uh, they use the paranormal to introduce elements of horror without going full on gore, and and that's as a parent, like I want my kid to be scared and, and like know how cool it is to be scared, but it's such a hard balance to it totally is, yeah. to not cross over into the, the fucking, I'm not going to sleep for three days. Yeah. Um, and then Tara also writes, there's a, also a series on the Disney channel called Vampirina, which is a really cute kids cartoon about vampires, ghosts, and werewolves. I watch all the time with my girls, age six and three. It's light and fun. The right amount of weird and spooky. I haven't heard of that one. I, I haven't either, but I know Bryson, show your kids Vampirina. <laughs> yeah, and Timothy, you can't, you beautiful bastard. Can't. Um, okay, I got a few. Do you, you don't have any right? Diego. I just, just have the, the ones that are off the. Yeah. Okay. Um, Dwight Fry says, "Back before cable was everywhere, there was there was on TV, which is a whole other discussion. Anyhow, it was either The Shining or the first Friday the Thirteenth that I snuck downstairs and watched from behind the couch. I think it was Friday." So that was his gateways into the genre. So I should show my daughter The Shining? Yeah, yeah. sure. Okay. Show her the Shining. Thanks, Dwight. Or Friday the 13th. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, Lana says, <laughs> Lol, we all know mine was Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I'm still truly terrified of those killer Oompa Loompas. I also loved 1989's Little Monsters, which I loved as oh, well. Oh, is that yeah. the one with Howie Mandel? Yeah, Howie Mandel and uh, the, uh, not the oh, Savage. Fred Savage. Fred Savage, yeah. 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 I love that movie. And it's basically the concept of monsters, ain't Yeah. It? Um, just with Howie Mandel yeah and uh, and Final Destination 2 was my first in theater horror movie experience Jeez. I was 12 I was haunted for days because of the highway car crash scene with the logs I was gonna say 12 is a pretty young age to I was watching it. well that's but I'm also a maniac I'm that's with true. you there like yeah I love that movie like the Final Destination 2 is my favorite of all of those ones is, um, that, is that Rubar uh, Rebar Rebar is that is that Final Destination is that no, the second a, one or Rebar is in Freddy vs. Jason Oh, okay. where the so it's just the log in the second. Yeah, one. it's the oh, logs okay. in the second one. Because yeah. I was gonna say one, some horror movie has made me scared of Reaper. It's probably Freddy vs. Jason because there's the one where he's throwing them he's all throwing through Jason. Jason. Yeah. yeah, yeah, probably. Okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, and then um, uh, Bryson says, so I first remember seeing a scene from Friday the Thirteenth Part Five, which was amazing to me. I had to have been like seven or eight. Then I remember being terrified out of my mind when my parents were watching the Blair Witch Project when that first came out. But the first horror things I remember, like, renting for myself were the Scary Movie franchise, which I guess kind of counts. <laughs> that does, but I'd say. Basically, my introduction to Scream, even though it was spoofing it. And Final Destination 2. It's still my favorite of the franchise, and when me and my friend rented it, we watched it probably five times within a couple of days. So him and Lana share that, and I guess me as well. See, the thing is with spoof movies, I, those can be a good getaway because it'll make you it, me laugh at it first, and then make you want to go watch the actual mm-hmm. movie it's based on. So Totally. Um, and then Bryson also says, as for as far as introducing my kids, I've kind of been shitty because I would watch them in front of my one year old because I th- I knew he wouldn't remember when I. Then I kind of just kept doing it when he was three. Then I realized he was remembering it, so I've tried to be better about not watching them in front of him. Uh, but I I remember he was intrigued from start to finish with any Japanese movie I'd watch. As one year old, he he would just he would just the. He would watch the entirety of The Grudge with me, what? but you would, you would have, but you would put on a Disney movie, and five minutes later he would go and do play or do something else. My kid is strange, but I love him. No, he's retaining horrible things. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> he's gonna start bringing. Look, Dad, look what I brought home. It's a dead cat. It's a dead cat. <laughs> he's gonna start trying to crab walk backwards down the stairs. <laughs> But uh, yeah, and then he says, I don't know how I'm going to approach it when I decide to start watching with them, uh, watching it with him when he is older, though, hoping to hear some suggestions. Like, for my, like, I always, I'm not a dad, but like, that's, like I've said, I think I said on the So Be It podcast, one of the reasons why I buy all my movies is because in the event that I do spawn some kind of offspring, I'm going to be able to show them all the movies that I love. Um, but I've, I have planned with Monsters, Inc. and uh, Paranorman are big ones for me. Um, and the Monster Squad, but uh, I don't know about that anymore. If I ever have a kid, God forbid, I will show them Kuso. <laughs> stop, yeah. stop. <laughs> Can I ask you something quickly? Yeah. Yes. God, I've heard you mention this so much. Okay, in like 100 words or less, why are you so upset? Okay, I've seen it too. Yeah. Why are you so obsessed with I that? I just love how different it is, and like I just love anything Flying Lotus does. It's to me, a, I love Flying Lotus. Yeah. Like his music is amazing, yeah. but... That movie is like I, I like like for what it is it's fine but yeah. you have a weird obsession. I just with that I shit. don't know what it is. It just it just 
does something to me. Like I just love the way it looks. I love I love the visuals. I love the music. I love the dialogue and how strange it is. Yeah, when he was three, he was watching Japanese horror. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Yeah, I just this I just, I just love yeah. I love the transitions and everything. I I love how awkward the acting is. I just even even the scene where like the woman's like grinding her teeth on the cement. Oh yeah. I, I just I lo- I just love how out there it is and how. It, it it just woke something up in me, and I just I love that movie. I think it was always living in you. But it's a, the, I've just said like when Courtney and I were watching Kusa, we got twenty minutes, and she made me turn off. I yeah, like, this is what the inside of Diego's brain looks like. Well, that that's what I was going to ask. Could you date a girl who hated Kusa? Yeah, yeah, that's the thing because I know this movie's not for everyone, and I and I think it's and that's another part, kind of the reason why I like it so much more too. Because to me, it's like this is my this is my thing. Like this yeah. is something that no one will ever be like. I like that movie more than you. It's like no, you fucking don't. <laughs> I watch that movie like once a week. Like I love that movie so much. Yeah, I was mean. That. I'm glad you came on because I really want to ask you yeah. how much why you love that show. Yeah, of so. course, it was going to come up at some point. Course, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, and uh, Genevieve says family friendly. My dad showed me movies that no six year old should watch. Um, Adam says Wolfman's got nards, <laughs> and then Lee Beckman says Long Live Fred Decker. So those are just not even, they're not stories. I just thought I'd mention them. Uh, but yeah, so <clears throat> there you have it. I don't know. It's a tricky situation to go about showing kids this kind of stuff because you never know what they're going to retain. But I will say from experience that obviously my parents let me watch pretty much anything I wanted to watch besides like graphic <clears throat> sex scenes, which is still, there's an argument to be said there that I can watch people's heads being cut off or I could watch like any horror movie. And I can't... You know can't watch the sexuality. greatest act of love ever. Yeah, exactly. You can't watch <laughs> sexuality. Um, or I'd have to cover my eyes when there's boobs on the screen, but it'd be okay watching some like the creeper rip someone's head off and eat its tongue out. Yeah. Like, Mitch, I feel so bad. I forgot to talk about Starry Eyes. Oh. I saw that. Yeah. Sorry. I'm, I'm, talk about it quick. It's too late. But. No, it's not. It's not. <laughs> okay. Did you like Starry Eyes? I'll be really quick. Loved it. I think it was so like relevant now with what we're mm-hmm. seeing. Yeah. It was way more smart than I thought it would be. Yeah. Uh, I just, it, it was awesome. I, I just, it was hard to watch. Yeah. But once you attach it to the, the relevance that the it has, of, movement. Of, yeah, exactly. Yeah. What what women have to do to sort of be relevant, um, yeah. recognized as it's like scary. a major player. Yeah. That was such a that. Uh, I think on the the last episode with me and Johnny on my podcast, you talked about the best horror. Uh, they have messages. Yeah. And. I think most of them don't, but this one had a really clear one that didn't beat you over the head with it. Yeah. Uh, anyways, I won't go into because no, I waited so long. I'm happy, sorry, but that's a great show. It, yeah, yeah, that's should. awesome. So. Yeah, it's fucking. That's a strange one. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, I think not. Not a gateway. <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't say Star Guys is a gateway. Uh, but I think that's a good place to wrap it up for the sure. for the day, guys. If you if you think so. Yep. So. Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, yep. of course. Everyone, yep. check out So Be It. You guys will be back, and next week you'll have another episode uh, coming out. Monday. Yeah, Monday you'll have another episode coming out. And, uh, yeah, thanks for joining us. I'm happy you and Diego could meet each yep. other finally. we got to get you on our show. Yeah, no, we can talk down. about uh, glow, glow sticks and, Lil Pump. and Molly and, <laughs> yep, and MDMA and all yeah, that. And <laughs> air horns. And <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, honestly, thanks so much, guys, and you guys have a great show. Thank yeah, you. thanks, man. It was fun. All right, well, uh, we'll be back next week. We'll let you know on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter what we are going to do because we're still planning on filling one more week without Boozy. Um, hopefully we get another listener question from boozy but uh we'll be back next week um till then stay spooky everyone stay spooky bye